right. The sisters. That's right, it does have a name. <laughs> Were you just looking at me like, Imperial IP? I knew it was a Fremont double. <laughs> I bought it because it looked good. <laughs> it's a pretty color. And it is It is quite good. It is, a, uh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Have you had that one? Mm, you know, I don't think I have. Yeah. It almost, I, well, as soon as I saw it, I was like, I really hope that's a red IPA. Yeah. No, it's not quite, but no. yeah. Anyway, uh, hey, we're live. Hey, hey! Look at that. Welcome to Talking Heads, episode 101. Your once weekly live show for the latest in beer and tech news. I'm Jeff. I'm John. Welcome to the show. If you are new to the show, uh, we drink uh, alcoholic beverages <laughs> on the show. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Uh, we do drink alcoholic beverages on the show, but this is a family-friendly show as much as we can make it. Uh, there might be some light language, but usually there's not. Uh, Content-wise, we're also as family-friendly as possible as well. Uh, there is going to be a, probably a little bit of political towards the end of this show uh, because of current situations with Blizzard and the NBA and a couple other organizations. Uh, and, and that is on the agenda, so uh, just be warned. Uh, uh, beyond that, uh, we do about 20 minutes of beer news, about an hour and 20 minutes worth of tech news, and then about 20 minutes of doing whatever we want to say. Yep. And we try to leave questions toward the end. We try to maybe 10, 15 minutes toward yeah. the end. There's usually a little bit of time at the end for Q&A if, uh, if you have any questions. Yeah. So, uh, uh, and as always, do let us know what you are drinking in the chat, and we will give shout-outs as we can. Yes. So. And you don't have to be drinking alcoholic. Uh, we encourage non-alcoholic beverages right. as well. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So again, as family friendly as possible. We do not uh, discourage. Yep. All right. Uh, speaking of drinking, what are we drinking today? So we're drinking, <laughs> Jeff. As many fans it's of this October. Show, oh god. Well, no. <laughs> I bring I bring <sighs> Jeff the stuff he hates. Yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to expand his palate um, of what he ate. And I brought Jeff a coffee pumpkin ale. You, you don't know what you like until you find what you hate. That's right. That's right. Uh, so Elysian's Punkachino coffee pumpkin ale, uh, 5%, and thank you for only bringing 12 ounces. That's right. I could have, but they, they, they do make these in 22 bummers. They, they do. Um, I've had this one before. This is, I think, the third or fourth year. So... Elysium usually make the best um, nationally distributed pumpkin beers. Yeah. Uh, if you're looking for more of that pumpkin pie flavor. Um, and then we also have Fremont's uh, Sisters, or The Sister, Imperial IPA. Yep, and this is uh, an 8.5, so it's a little bit more of a heavy hitter uh, for the night. Uh, I've, I've had this one before. I bought the six-pack, and I've been really digging this one. Mm. So I, I think you are going to enjoy this Fantastic. especially. I don't, I don't think I've had that one. So. Yeah. And then... What the hell is that? <laughs> this is another one of these things that I bring to Jeff's show. Uh, so I was on YouTube and a uh, uh, channel favorite of ours, the Whiskey Tribe. Whiskey Tribe. Uh, they were doing something pretty interesting with a carbonator. They were carbonating whiskey. Yeah, they they uh, they, they said you know carbonated whiskey is kind of this new tr modern trend that some bars are trying to do, uh, and they were using a Soda Stream and a Drinkmate recarbonator. Yeah. Well, John, you have a proper recarbonator. I have a proper recarbonator. Yeah. I have basically a, a homebrew setup and, you know, to prop carbonate kegs. So this is cranked up. I mean, hold yeah. that. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bomb. <laughs> That's probably 60 PSI. Probably. I, I think yeah. I had it right around there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I think the bottle's only rated for 90. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's, it's very well carbonated whiskey. Yep. So, uh... On the Whiskey Tribe, they were experimenting with a number of different uh, types of whiskey. They, they tried a Canadian, they tried a bourbon, they tried a rye. Um, and uh, I think what they found was Bushmills is what they liked the best. Uh, I asked John what he had at home and uh, what he was willing to spare for That's this carbonation sure process. What it was. And uh, he actually chose my favorite house whiskey, which is Seagram 7. Yeah. And so uh, we got a little bit of Seagram 7 here. But instead of just drinking it straight, as, uh, as some are probably wanting to do with this i decided we'd make a little bit of a cocktail and one of my favorite go-to whiskey cocktails is a godfather oh yes now the funny thing is i was kind of undecided on this before the show and so i reached out on twitter and uh discord about an hour to an hour and a half before the show started and i said what's your favorite whiskey cocktail go and what i got was one actual whiskey cocktail and seven people with variations on how to drink it straight <laughs> 
Well, I mean, I guess that's... I'll, I'll take a whiskey and water, hold the water. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, whiskey on the rocks or... You know. Shotgun it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'll, I'll have two whiskeys, please. <laughs> right. Uh, I was looking for a cocktail, guys. Uh, so I figured I'd uh, dig into the vault and uh, and we'd try Godfather tonight. Oh, that sounds uh, good. I'm good with that. So. Um, you can open that. Okay. This should be... If it will... <laughs> Please don't just pop off on me. There it goes. Keep going. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah, baby. I mean, it's still coming. <laughs> you could breathe that oh, in. Oh, man, that smells good. A lot of vanilla. Oh, yeah. A lot that of vanilla. Aromatic. That smells better than the last time. Wow. I tried this. All right. So basically, we're going to You want to try it straight? Uh, I might try a little bit straight. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm a little bit curious. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see this, but this looks like soda. <laughs> it does. It pours like cream soda, like it's hitting the the wall and just immediately foaming up. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> yeah, don't anyone can even. I don't know if it focus on that. Yeah, sorry, my my upper camera's off tonight. There are yes, easily that is easily carbonated. <laughs> yeah, that's still bubbling. Yes, that's amazing. You know, you hit this creaminess up front, actually. You do. Um, it makes it much more sour in the back end. Yeah. Ooh. Wow, uh, actually. In in the video, they were talking that it, it tricks your mouth into kind of thinking, oh, I'm drinking soda, so you want to right. take a big gulp. It really does. Yeah. And you're like, oh, this is this is carbonated. This is soda. It's going to be light. And halfway through it, you're just like, uh, it's just burning. <laughs> this is right. 40%. Right, right. chill down in my uh, jigger here oh yeah it's filming up yep there we go so we're gonna do an ounce and a half of that <laughs> this is so stupid and an ounce and a half for john seriously i can't pour this very fast that's funny there you go And then, I'm going to put my... There it is. There it is. I'm ready. Ah. Jeff, we don't want it to go flat. <laughs> you don't? <laughs> so this is just a one-to-one -one cocktail. You do an ounce and a half of whiskey and an ounce and a half of, uh, of Amaretto. Um, you can go Di Sirono. Um, Amaretto is supposed to be an almond liqueur. Most of them aren't actually almonds these days. Uh, most of them are, I believe, Extract. actually made from uh, pomegranates. What? Yeah, it's weird. Pomegranates or prunes or something like that is actually what most amarettos these days are made out of. Huh. So, um, yeah, they, they use, like, almonds as a bitterant inside of here. But I believe the base, the of, base is, of the pomegranate? Is something, else, is something else, right? Huh. So... Oh, that's a flavor. Yeah. <laughs> it there's this weird bite at the back end. There is. This is usually a super smooth cocktail. And uh, what they were saying on Whiskey Tribe is it was a very um, if you take a bitter whiskey and you add CO2, you're gonna make it even more bitter because CO2 makes things bitter, which is why sodas come out super sweet. Yeah. Is they they over sweeten them. Um and, and why club soda ends up tasting bitter, even though it's just CO2 and water. Um, yeah, it almost kind of almost tastes like there's Splenda in this. Yeah, a little bit. Like, like I don't know, the, oh, not, oh, an off, uh, a non-sugar sweetener of some yeah. kind. And by the way, we are trying this for the first time. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this may not work. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, what is that? Who's drinking that on Discord? Uh, that's Becky. Becky, I want that so bad. I will pay you to ship me some of that. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. If you have more than that, hit me up on Discord. And if you guys haven't been on Jeff's Discord, great channel. Uh, so Becky is having an uh, Avery Brewing uh, barrel-aged pumpkin and spice. Yeah. By uh, Avery. Yeah. That one, actually, I hear is supposed to be really good. And she's having the 2016. Oh. Look at the percentage. Oh, wow. On the left-hand side. Oh, my God. Yeah. 
That's why I wanted to try it. 18.8%. That's almost as strong <laughs> as this cocktail. <laughs> yeah, that's insane. Well done, Becky. Well done. Yes. All right, let's look at the chat real quick, and then we'll get into some uh, some notes. Uh, Two Brothers Brewing, uh, Domaine Dupage, French, uh, French co- Country Ale. I have never even heard of that. Yeah. Uh, having a Seven Deadly Sins, not a bad red wine. Interesting. Oh. Uh, let's see. <laughs> oh, no pumpkin beer. <laughs> oh, oh, no pumpkin beer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see what else we got. Having an oatmeal stout. Uh, looks like I'm having a cappuccino. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I do it at work. Yeah, he was having a, a, a super dark oatmeal stout. Uh, so it, it's it's like a black ale because uh, he he shared uh, what it was before. Oh. I forget what it uh, who's brewing it. Uh, having Gatorade tonight to replenish, rehydrate after a weekend out. There you go. There you go. Responsible. All right. Well, you know, it's funny we were talking about this with um, the whiskey tribe and interesting whiskeys. Mm-hmm. You know, recently there's been uh, another interesting whiskey that's kind of come to light. Yes, there has. Uh, so Glenn Levitt, uh, best known for their scotches. Uh, very, very good scotch. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the, of the Glenn Levitt 12. Yeah. Um, they announced a new way to enjoy cocktails. A new way to enjoy scotch. <laughs> and <laughs> did you see the video? It's only a minute long. Yeah. And it comes across as so incredibly pretentious. <laughs> um, and even for a scotch, it seems pretentious. Yeah. God, it reminded me, and I don't remember what Star Trek episode or what series. I don't know. It was, and you've probably never seen it, as Enterprise. But uh-huh. there's a... There's, I've only ever watched a couple episodes of Enterprise. I think it was like the first I'm, I'm a season. little it was, it was the one where, um, I think the uh, engineer... I forget what his name is. You guys can correct me because I don't pay attention to the Enterprise. Mm-hmm. Uh, he gets pregnant. But he has to eat these like gel-like capsules uh, that Sorry, are basically a... water. Sorry, and they, the way he was eating me. it looked just like they ate in the video. Yeah. And I was just like, this is stupid. Yeah. Now, for those who haven't seen the video yet, here's a little visual image of what it actually is. They look like Tide Pods. There's no other way to explain them. Yeah. They look like Tide Pods. They are identical to the packing method used by that. So if we were trying to not get kids to eat Tide Pods a year ago, now we're just serving them in scotch form. Well, yeah, that's how... I mean, if we can somehow make scotch, like, clean my dishes and clothes... Yeah. <laughs> and smell like scotch. Probably the best tweet that I saw was do the uh, the Glenlivet cocktail challenge. Uh, film yourself uh, doing a load of laundry with these. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of the Tide Pod challenge. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so these are only going to be introduced uh, at a one-time event. Um, they're actually not as big as a shot. They're actually mm-hmm. like two-thirds the size of a shot, 23 milliliters. So they're not even a full shot. Yeah. Um, and what these are are actually more of um, specialty whiskey cocktails. It's yeah. like a flavored whiskey. Yeah, th- these are not 80 proof. These are uh, cocktails made into a consumable form. Yeah, it's a it's a seaweed-based gel yeah. type thing. And they're only going to be released uh, at the bar um, in, in London. Uh, October thirteenth. Yeah, and they say uh, if it's a success, they might have it at a couple of their like events. Mm-hmm. But it's not going to be this whole bay like a, hey, a retail packaging. A retail packaging. Right. Hey, you know, go to your liquor store and get some Tide Pod. There are whiskey pods. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not going to be like that. Um, you know, there's going to be that's that's. I'm betting that's like two hundred bucks a plate. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Overpriced. They probably only made like two hundred a piece. I completely forgot coasters. Oh. Ugh. The uh, carbonation is pretty much gone now. I can still taste it. Really? Um, I, I can. It, there's. It's still a little bit bubbly. Um, definitely, as it's settling, it's much more enjoyable. Yeah, I, I kind of stirred mine up a little bit to get that uh, Amarillo in there to sweeten it up. That really helped. It, it give, but now it's just starting to taste like a little bit more of cream soda. Yeah, um, and like I said, uh, 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 Godfather is a very very sweet cocktail. Yeah. Uh, for, and for being all liquor, it's incredibly sweet. Um, there's no burn to it. I still have a little bit of carbonation that kind of lingers through the flavor. Um, and even when it was super bubbly, uh, it was very, very pleasant right up front. Um, yes, it, it's really the back end that's yeah. 
kind of the heart that rolls off and yeah. kind of yeah. no i think actually the very front end is actually way better mm -hmm. than it's straight yeah. because it really kind of brings this vanilla character out of out of the whiskey yeah yeah that that aroma was super vanilla oh yeah it, it was vanilla the whole way i would i would love to try this with like a brandy yeah uh i have a brandy <laughs> maybe well, next time yeah <laughs> i mean i have a really horrible brandy but yeah um yeah yeah, I've got a couple. Uh, in fact, I've got a, a Metaxa 7 in there. I mean, if you want to get... I don't want to waste 12 sex. ounces of it, yeah. though. <laughs> um, Which is kind of what you need to do to carbonate it. Yeah, I mean, I, I did a little bit, but yeah. uh, I don't need that much. But um, on this show, we've actually talked about a lot of interesting beers. Mm -hmm. uh, we've talked about uh, beer made from yeast that went up in space. Mm -hmm. We talked about beer that basically uh, was commemorating space shuttle launches. Mm -hmm. Um, but apparently now there is a beer with space food. Yes. Essentially. Space yes. made, uh, beer made from food that was meant to go up in space. Yep. Uh, introducing the Brutang, <laughs> which I freaking love the name. <laughs> uh, I think, uh. They actually advertise the beer as Brutang ain't nothing to f with. <laughs> yeah, it is. That, that's the. That's I the wasn't best. sure if it was the brewery or some other. Person no, that made that's that their tweet. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's the best part. Uh, so there is a what is it man? Yeah, a dangerous man brewing, uh, brewed a sour uh, beer, a sour hazy beer, which is that doesn't make sound. Right. Yeah. And then they add tang to it. Or yeah. they brew it with tang. Yes. There's actual tang. It's not the tang flavored inspired, or inspired by, right. you know, they changed the label. No, there's actual tang in this beer. Uh, that's probably why they had to make it a sour. Because mm -hmm. tang has a very nice tart flavor. It's to a tangy it. flavor yeah. to it. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this beer is only, though, again, at the brewery. And. Um, but it is available in growlers and crowlers. So yeah. if you are lucky enough, you can find one to ship around. They The reviews on this have been mixed. Uh, I saw a couple of really bad reviews of saying it's okay, it's mm -hmm. horrible, and then there's like five stars. Oh my gosh, this tastes like Tang. Just juice. like Tang. It's just like Tang. It's like, right. when was the last time you drank Tang? Oh, I, I don't drink Tang, so. Okay. Yeah, I actually have Tang. Oh, do you? I have some in the cupboard right now. Kids drink it? No, I drink it. You drink Tang? I drink Tang. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I should drink some tang. I have I probably haven't had it since I was like twelve. Yeah. So. No, I I have a, a container of tang in the cupboard. We should mix it with beer. Next on hops and brews, carbonated tang. Carbonated whiskey tang. Ew! <laughs> oh my gosh! I mean, I drink it, but seriously. I know you drink it. <laughs> You'll drink anything. Yeah. Yeah. Before the show, they were talking about uh, the Jameson pickleback. Uh, Have you seen that? No. Yeah. Uh, it, it's become popular back on the East Coast where you do a shot of Jameson followed by a chaser of pickle juice. Oh, I've, I've heard of pickle juice drinks. Like, and, and yeah, I... I ah. Yeah. Yeah. No, I... Unfortunately, I still have another one I have to do, uh, a pickle review, and I don't want to do it. <laughs> See, and, and it's funny because I don't mind cucumbers. It's once you brine it, you go oh, well beyond... I love cucumbers. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, it's, I don't... I maybe once a year I'll have a pickle. Oh, I no, if, not even if, if that. Not even. Not even I, but I, I can stand pickles in a relish in like a tuna salad. Or I can something. do that. Yeah, that's what I, I can do. And it has to be a sweet pickle. Yeah, and and that's the absolute limit. Yeah, um, I can't do dill. I hate dill. Mm -hmm. uh, I hate most pickled anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it just yeah. You know what's funny? I pickle like, is just concentrated evil. I do like vinegar though. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Uh, speaking of weird and unique beers, and speaking of the East Coast, uh, yes. Sam Adams has re-released their annual Utopia series. And we still can't get it in Oregon. Because it's illegal. Yep. Uh, straight up illegal. Uh, now, we give Norway a bunch of crap for their strict beer laws that you can't buy a beer that's over 4.8% yeah. or 4.5% or whatever it is. Uh, Sam Adams, you can't buy in the state of Oregon and 15 other states... Because it's a beer that is 28% ABV. Yeah. But what's really funny is every year this comes out, there's a new news article about it that um, Sam Adams' new beer is yeah. illegal. It's like, no. They've been doing this for 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So <laughs> why is this a revelation? I know. <laughs> and it comes in at two hundred plus dollars depending yeah. on where you're at. Yeah. Uh, now, and then it is a very limited release. They are only making, there's only a hundred casts of it. So yep. it's, it's, that may be a lot, but you know, 50 nations mm -hmm. or 50 states, that's, um, still a mm -hmm. lot to distribute. So, uh, it is still highly sought after. I hear it tastes basically like brandy. Um, mm -hmm. we try, I, we, we talked about getting one, uh, last year, but it yeah. was like a two hour trip yeah. try, just to go and get it. I might. I'm thinking about I, it. If, it, if it's a little close and it's the same place as last year, I think I might do it. You know what? I'll, I'll split it with yeah, you. Yeah, I know. I think we, I think we can we, split we, it. We can get the four of us together. We can do a Hops and Brews show. Yeah. Where where we try a Sam Adams Utopia. Just yeah. like eight ounces each. Because it's a 32 ounce bottle, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we could, we could do eight ounces each. And it, it comes in this weird... Um, it almost looks like a still or a copper still. Yeah. Uh, there yeah, we go. Yeah, Sorry, that's a better one. But uh, yeah, I, I might be willing to pony up the fifty bucks or whatever it is to to kind of split it with. Yeah. Me. Or well, heck, you and I do it fifty fifty. Yeah, we can just do a fifty fifty. Yeah. yeah. So you know, what's funny is it it looks like metal on the outside and then it's just plastic on the inside. Yeah. <laughs> and they do cap it. It's not even it's not even a twist right. or anything. It's it's yeah it's still two hundred. 200 bucks 200 for a beer. Bucks, yeah. For a beer. I've done, well, you've done $45 for a bomber. I, I know I, you have. Yes. No, I've done, I've done, the largest I've ever done is $50, $50 a bottle. Yeah. So. Uh, and I've done, I've done a $40 bottle before and I've done 20, 20 and 25 is my wheelhouse as far as like, I'm going to buy a special beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 25 is usually like yeah. a standard. You go for like this rare barrel aged beer yes. or some kind. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not foreign to that. This is Double the price. Yeah, I, I've mm. traded for higher. Yeah, but I've never actually ponied up the cash. Yeah, so yeah, uh, I'm thinking about it. Yeah, I'm thinking, about like, it. I'm thinking about it. Now, if someone would like to donate to the cause, right, Becky, <laughs> and that pumpkin beer, throw that one in too. That's right. Uh, Anyway, that's the end of beer news. It is uh, 25. 25. And in fact, I remembered my timestamp. So there we go. What? I created a timestamp. Oh. I think. <laughs> it worked last time. So I'm hoping it will work again. Uh, but yeah, 25 minutes into the show. And that is the end of beer news. Um, yeah. <sighs> it's end of beer news, but yet we're still talking about the cocktail. It's an interesting novelty. Um... I wouldn't, I wouldn't, the one I was thinking about vodka, I mm -hmm. probably wouldn't mind carbonated vodka because there's probably almost no taste to it. Yeah. But at that point, I mean, vodka in its purest form is supposed to be a neutral spirit. It's yeah. supposed to have no taste. Um, so then I'm just having carbonated water. Then I'm just having carbonated I'm, water. I'm, I'm having 40% White Claw. Right. <laughs> And can I get the same effect with... Uh, oh, and by the way, I want to revisit your White Claw episode. The IPA one? Yeah. <laughs> so people ask me to bring it to your show. Yeah, I know they so. do. Uh, so we, we may have to do that. I, I might have to, to craft it up a little bit. Oh, okay. But, you know, we, we, could, we could probably do something with that. But uh, I'm going... I've done Godfathers with a spritz of seltzer before, mm -hmm. and it was better than this. And so I think while we were able to carbonate a whiskey, eh. Yeah, it, it is an eh. Yeah. I had more interesting flavors just within that shot. I yeah. may not have enjoyed it, but it was just interesting. It was very interesting. Um, the aromas, I think, really improved what the secret aromas are. Yes. Because uh, normally it's a, and, and I had a little bit of a snifter right before the show because I went, well, what does the secret 7 cocktail go with? Let me think about that and maybe just edge it towards sweet a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Um, and, uh, it was just kind of, oof. Yeah. I, I think adding seltzer to a cocktail instead of using a carbonated whiskey is honestly the better way to go. Hmm. Interesting experiment. Yeah. Very interesting experiment. Made a cool video for them. Yeah. They, they purposely went wild because they started blowing things up. Yeah. And, and, you know, basically wasting almost a gallon of whiskey each yeah. time. Yeah. Um. Uh, okay. That's enough. No more. Yeah. Shh. <laughs> Oh, it was a great video. It was a way. great go video. Oh yeah, go go watch it. Uh, um. I freaking love those guys. <laughs> um. Anyway, yeah, interesting concept, but uh, yeah, it'll probably end there. <laughs> yeah, that's that's where it stops. 
All right, moving on to a little bit of tech news. Uh, so AMD finally, finally, finally uh, has Navi coming to the masses. Now they did release the uh, the 5700 and the 5700 XT, which are their 350 and 400 dollar graphics cards respectively. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, and honestly, that's a little above most people's budget. New budget. Yeah. Um, now I, I know the extremes and the enthusiasts do go for the twenty, you know, the twenty seventy, twenty eighty, yeah. maybe even a twenty eighty. And they're, po they're ponying it up for it. But but the the wheelhouse for most graphics cards traditionally has lived in the, about the three hundred dollar range, three hundred dollars and below. Yeah. And in fact, the two hundred dollar graphics cards sell just as well as those ones do. So that's where the range should be at. Which is why for years AMD has been making the RX five eighty, RX five ninety, RX five seventy is because those are between two and three hundred dollars. Yep. Um. This one kind of breaks some new ground that AMD is not used to entering and competing in, and that is the sub $200 range. So the RX 5500, uh, they haven't announced an actual price, but it is going to be a sub $200 graphics card uh, for the reference card. Um, what aftermarket car or uh, third party cards look like, we're not sure yet. We have no confirmation one way or the other. Um, what I can tell you is the raw specs of it. Uh, it will have 22 compute units down from the 40 and 44 used in the 5700 and 5700 XT. So roughly half the power of a 5700 XT. Yep. Uh, up to 1845 megahertz. Um, it's got PCIe 4.0, which won't matter because it will never saturate even close to those uh, number of lanes. Uh, GPU effective speed is GDDR6 at 14 gigabit per second. Uh, and four gigabytes of video memory. The cool thing is this is a, just a 150 watt card. It will come with an eight pin PCIe power connector as standard, although it could probably get away with a six pin. Um, but uh, a nice power efficient, good high end 1080p graphics card. Oh yeah, I'm betting this is gonna come at 199. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's like 169, 179. Really? I, I would not I, be surprised. I, I, I was When they said it's going to be below the 200, I was like, oh, that means 199, 198. 90% mm -hmm. of the time when I read that, that's exactly what it means. It's it's to get you to click bait. Right. Whoa, 198. Yeah. Yeah, that's $200. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, but uh, they're positioning it to target the R the GTX 1650. Um, and, and even going toe to toe with the 1660. The 1660 you can get for 199 up to 220 for some custom cards. Um, whereas the 1650 is between 150 and 180. And so if they're saying it's gonna beat out the, the 1650 and that's where they're drawing the line, mm. it has to come in below $200. Yeah. But and I mean like 20 or $30 below that $200 so, mark. So they gotta make it <clears throat> competitive enough to like, I want to get that because I'm going to save money. Because it's going to oust the the card that's at the same price yeah. point and compete with the card that's at the higher end price yeah. point. And so that's where I think they're aiming. Is so I think, that's where you're probably getting the 160. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I get that. Okay. So I, I would guess 160, 170, 180, somewhere right in that that ballpark. Um, so, but we have no news and no reviews on it because this is just a paper launch. There's no card. There's no review samples. There, they, it won't even be on shelves for another six weeks almost, and and that's disappointing uh, because people have been waiting. Wait for Navi. Uh, people have been waiting for quite a long time, and well, that comes right into the holiday season. And I'm wondering if that that's what the push is for the new the new holiday season builds. And and I'm sure it is. You I, know, I'm, you know, it's probably going to hit store shelves. They they said sometime in November. I would guess sometime around November 10th or 15th. In oh, that, yeah, and, and, and then they'll put a $10 off Black Friday sale. Yep. Or, or get a video game with it or something they'll, like that. They'll include games. They're not yeah. going to reduce the price. Yeah, uh, and then, um, yeah, it, you know, get that and get memory or motherboard for $20 off. Mm -hmm. If you buy it, CPU, a uh, whole AMD system. Yep. Comes with the latest, greatest version. Right. So I'm guessing this is to finally replace Polaris GPUs, and you would be correct. Uh, this is what's finally going to oust the uh, the RX 580 and 590 out. Uh, this should be, I'm guessing, 20 to 30 percent faster than an RX 580 for a very similar price point, if not a little bit below. Yep. Um, remember, the RX 570 launched at 230 dollars. 
uh, the RX 580, or no, it was 199 for the RX 570. Uh, the RX 580 launched for 279. So if we're getting even better performance for $100 less, so like I said, my guess is like 179 is mm. what this is going to come out for. Um, that's actually a pretty solid deal. That's actually, yeah, I was just thinking that too. Like, because if you're going for a brand new build and you're looking like, look, I'm a casual gamer. Mm -hmm. There are more of those than hardcore gamers mm -hmm. out there. Um, God, I want to play with my kid or my kid wants to play a game and I'll play with him. So I want a little bit higher end, something to right. do some adult games. Right. Um, yeah, you'll pony up and you're, you're going to $500 and you'll have your system. Right. Boom. And, and make no bones about it. Um, I mean, I tested some RX 470s a while back, and those can play every single game on the market at ultra settings at 1080p at 60 FPS, yeah. uh, with very, very few exceptions. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm talking like Shadow of the Tomb Raider scored like a 55, well, they, and, and GTA 5 scored a 58. Yeah, well, they said that that did support uh, 4K at 60 frames per second. It, that's what the output does support, yeah. although so does a 1050. Yeah. So. will support a 4K display. Um, but gaming on 4K is something different, unless you're a console player. Uh, <laughs> oh. Um, but yeah, so the card's coming out. We won't know anything about it for at least the next five weeks or so. Get a month, you'll hear a leak, and then a right. week after that, official, official stats. Right. Now, I don't have a slide for it because this was just announced about an hour or two ago, but Intel is discontinuing their KB Lake G uh, CPU APU style systems, which was the Intel i7 mobile CPU with a Vega 20 mobile GPU strapped on top of it. Um, now, the interesting thing is this comes the day after the announcement of the RX uh, 5500, which is 22 compute units. Um, now, a lot of people have always have been wondering why when you introduced Vega, did Vega not get any mainstream cards? Did mm -hmm. we not see a a $200 Vega card, you know, a Vega 20 or something like that, because Intel got the Vega 20. Other than that, we had the Vega 3 through 11, and then we had the Vega 56 and 64, and then later on, the Radeon 7 got the 7 nanometer shrink down to, uh, with 60 yeah. compute units. Um, my theory on this is that to get a little bit better adoption of the Vega GPUs and make some more money off of it. They license the technology to Intel with a no compete clause. With we're going to give you a Vega 20 and we won't come anywhere near it for performance. Mm. So we'll, we'll release a Vega 11 and we'll release a Vega 64 and a, and a 56. Yeah. But we'll leave that center market and the That's mobile market to you. And so if you guys want to produce this and license it, you're more than welcome to. And, and it has X for an expiration date. Well, I think X for the expiration date was yesterday because all of a sudden AMD the, the day before or the, you know, on that yeah. day releases, announces a 20 compute unit or 22 compute unit GPU. The same day. And then, then 24 after, hours later, yeah, Intel yeah. says, oh, we can't make these anymore. Interesting. That's my theory it, is AMD was purposely avoiding that market to, to allow the sales of their chips on Intel platform. Yeah. Uh, and 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 honestly, at the time, it was a good deal because AMD didn't have a competitive product for that center market. Yeah. And so why not make money off of Intel's back? Yeah. No, I mean, that, that could have been how in, uh, AMD stood afloat mm -hmm. for a long time. You know, because back then, they weren't really producing too many quality items, kind of like they're starting to really come up. Right. I mean, this now. was over two years ago before Ryzen had taken off. Mm -hmm. and th that they that licensed was like things. the very release of Ryzen 1. Yeah, this but. was this was KB Lake. And so this was uh, seventh gen. Yeah. So th this was, yeah, predating the, the release of, uh, of Ryzen 1. No. If I'm, if my timeline is correct, or maybe very shortly or, after. Yeah. Um, but obviously AMD wasn't ready to enter the space themselves, but they said, hey, we can produce the chips. You guys can sell them. And, and you get a two-year contract with them. Yeah. And then after two years, you have to cut. And so I think that's what happened. Um, and then Intel, they're like, look, they're struggling. They're going to need it. We're, we can cruise. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, that's my theory on why AMD hasn't been, uh, or rather, hasn't been bringing, bring a, yeah, bringing Vega to the lower end. And has been prolonging Polaris's life because mm. Polaris was that two to three hundred dollar graphics. Card. Yeah, and 
they're prolonging Polaris and people are going, well, you got Vega and now Navi on the market. Where the hell is our $200 Navi card and $200 Vega card? Well, it's probably because they had a non-compete with Intel. Just a theory. No inside information, no no anything, but... It's too late now, even if it was inside information. Right, but but knowing how sometimes things like this work and cross, you know, cross-company lines work, I wouldn't be surprised. So. Uh, AMD also made some more announcements yesterday, uh, announcing that the Ryzen 9 3900, the worst-kept secret in the industry, uh, <laughs> and the Ryzen 5 3500X, the second-worst-kept <laughs> secret in the industry... <laughs> Uh, are actually official uh, as Ryzen Pro CPUs. Uh, or not Ryzen Pro, excuse me. Uh, as, as Ryzen CPUs. These are going to be OEM-only chips. So things that you would get from, you know, Best Buy yeah. and uh, the, HP and Dell and whatnot. The, These will be available to... In, inbox purchase, to pre-built purchases. To OEM partners only. Yeah. Um, and the interesting thing is the Ryzen 9 3900 is a 12-core, 24-thread... 65 watt TDP chip. It's a nice chip. Very nice chip. Um, so obviously we don't have a per chip price because that really doesn't exist for for Them. our channels. No. Uh, but the same 70 megabytes of cache, the same six, uh, you know, 12 core, 24 yeah. thread, um, the same 16 PCIe lanes, 24 uh, processor lanes. Uh, a s significantly lower base frequency at 3.1 gigahertz and a slightly lower boost frequency at 4.3. Uh, this will still be an overclockable chip, uh, but the out-of-the-box TDP is only 65 watts. And for 12 cores, 24 threads, that's really freaking impressive. Yeah. Because uh, we just built John a 12 core, 24 thread system, and I think that's a 135 watt chip at 2.8 gigahertz. <laughs> What'd you give me? <laughs> Video coming soon. My castaways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, video coming soon, by the way. Um, so the fact that AMD is able to crank out this level of performance at 65 watts, that's insane. Yeah. Not to mention the six-core, six-threaded Ryzen 5 3500X. Yeah. Now, this one, you do lose hyper-threading. Yeah. You, you do lose your simultaneous multi-thread. But 3.6 gigahertz, 4.1 gigahertz boost, it's the same frequencies as as the uh, the 3600 um, you just lose that multi-threading you have the same amount of cash you have the same PCIe lens same 65 watt TDP yeah yeah I, I'm curious to how big box stores are going to advertise these builds mm -hmm. to sell them to people because AMD still as far as the non PC people around oh that's the, the cheaper brand I think I think people still see Intel I, th I think there's gonna as be in the light, as the major you know, so how do they build this flashiness to really sell these AMD PCs, or are they just going to go dirt cheap? I, no, they're not going to go dirt cheap. Uh, they're going to do what they've always done, and that's a Ryzen or an AMD six core CPU or an AMD twelve core CPU. They won't advertise what exact chip is in there um, because the average consumer doesn't care. But the average consumer does know. Oh, it's got twelve cores. Yeah, well, wow. I was going to say, do you think they'll say AMD, or they think they'll just say it's a twelve core now, PC? Now, AMD does have eight years of stigma to get past because remember, their old advertising was not as fast, but half the cost. That's that's kind of what I was. It, it was now. it was cheaper. Does the same thing. Uh, and so they were always the cheap brand. They were always the inexpensive thing, even when they were competitive, uh, price and performance both. Um, they were always seen as the cheaper alternative to Intel. Now they're the cheaper alternative to Intel, but they're also way better matching performance yeah. at the very least across the board, and in some cases besting them. Um, it's going to be a stigma to have to get over. But as AMD starts winning over the enthusiast crowd, as more and more people start building 3900X and 3950X workstations, yeah. um, that stigma will change. It's not going to change overnight, but AMD has a good product. They, they've got a very good product. Their marketing is doing very well, um, and people are starting to buy in. I yeah. mean, they, they're, they're winning market share across the board, uh, and, and that doesn't happen by accident. That certainly doesn't happen just because they're cheaper. It With... with, uh, with 3000 series it's happening because they're the better option yeah overall uh yeah I, i'm very curious to walk into like best buy you know end of the year and mm -hmm. see what uh how they're portraying 
all the different products. Right. Or or do they even care? Are they just gonna be like, yeah, here's a here's a twelve core processor, mm -hmm. PC build. Uh, it's fifty dollars cheaper than that Intel over there. Right. You know, but then you go and look at the stack, and Intel's all gone. Yeah. You know, and it's like, oh, that doesn't make. You know, they're not pushing for it. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm 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 very curious how all of that's gonna play out, even in the in, because that's still gonna play out in the Intel AMD battle. Yes. Um, Intel can still make money. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, so. <sighs> AMD is also in the news, but it's because <laughs> MSI uh, inadvertently confirmed a new chipset for Threadripper. <laughs> uh, so this has been leaked a couple of weeks ago. I think John and I talked about this. Yeah. Uh, uh, it was a possibility. It was a possibility, uh, but the they had actual chipset part numbers. Usually when we hear, oh, it may have a new chipset, that means, no, it's going to be an updated motherboard. No. Uh, what they said was... Threadripper is going to two distinct chipsets. There's going to be a, a TRX40 and a TRX80. And the difference between the two is four channel versus eight channel memory. Um, where all chips should be compatible with the platform, but the boards will have different chipsets and will enable either four channel or eight channel memory on these Threadripper CPUs. Um, and so that meant that leak, that specific leak, had a little bit of credence to it. Well, MSI accidentally confirmed it today. <laughs> Uh, by mentioning that this board is available in a Creator TR TRX40 platform. <laughs> so that chipset does exist, and it's not just in AMD slides. It's actually on a board partner's website uh, for what platforms are eligible for their, yeah. their MSI buyer program. Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. Now, we know Threadripper 3 is going to be announced sometime in November. Uh, AMD has been playing really coy about it, but uh, Lisa very famously said, uh, you haven't heard the last of Threadripper in 2019. Yeah. Um, oh, and back so, in May, right? Uh, something like that. Something like that. So there's a little... This is on net. Little, yeah, a little bug that's been flying around and bugging the absolute heck out of me. Um, anyway. If you see a black pixel going through... Yeah, it's just your monitor. Yeah. <laughs> get a new one that's right and go make sure to go through Jeff's Amazon affiliate account <laughs> down in the video description yeah down in the video description to I have an Amazon that, store where I recommend all my parts to pick up that monitor that's right <laughs> and you might need a new digital cable to go with <laughs> uh, actually I do have a new uh, 1440p 144 hertz FreeSync HDR monitor coming in for review. that you're giving to me. Oh, you heard it here, folks. Jeff is giving me an awesome monitor with that bill that you heard about earlier. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> I gave you a 1440p monitor with that, and a motherboard, and a yeah, CPU, yeah, yeah. and a but case. You know, I I supplied the power supply. You did. It's a great one. And what a power supply! Yeah, what was. a that's hint hint to the video. <laughs> Gosh, because it's a great. Yeah, all right, that's enough. Whew. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so TRX40 yeah. pretty much confirmed as a four-channel Threadripper CPU uh, chipset, and uh, more information to come probably very soon. Yeah, I, I would probably bet within the next four to five weeks. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm just about done if we want to crack into the beer. Yeah, uh, you want to bite the bullet? And go with... Uh... Yeah, All right. I do. All right. <laughs> so Fremont's double IPA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll drink the pumpkin. Hey, you, we have an uh, almond in our mouth, so it shouldn't be too bad. Yeah. At least they're not twist tops. That's how you know it's quality. That's right. Smell the cap. It's like a fine wine. Actually, I smell more coffee than pumpkin. No, it's it's really not bad. Yeah. I don't hate it like some of the pumpkin beers you've given me before. <laughs> I don't hate it from the outset. I uh, I do have a pumpkin milkshake IP I can bring next time if you want. <laughs> I mean, if we really want to do something. No. Uh, thank you for reminding me, Skull. Drink number two, Elysian Brewing Punkachino Coffee Pumpkin Ale. Okay, cheers, cheers, buddy. Old pal. Mm. Why do I buy you computers again? 
Can I bring you carbonated whiskey? See how I didn't say beer? Carbonated whiskey and pumpkin beer. That's well, kind of sour. The whiskey has really muted my palate. Yeah. I get I get cinnamon. There, pumpkin and cinnamon there. Yeah. Like that far deep into it. It is a little warm. We did let it sit yeah. out um, a bit, but I don't know if it's the whiskey Amarillo. Mm. I get a little sour note. Uh, and actually, yeah. not even a little. There's actually quite There's a bit. There's a lot, and it stays. Okay, there's some coffee, and there's the pumpkin. Like it's that long. I don't. Yeah, I don't know if it's. Um, yeah. Our beverage. It was probably the cocktail before, because remember, amaretto is super sweet. Yeah. And this should be served much colder than we're drinking. Yes, it, it. should. Yeah. Um, that almost makes me think. Well, actually, an imperial IPA. You can have kind of warm. Uh, someone says TR3 Mini ITX, please. And I agree with the next comment, which is TR3 ITX Y. <laughs> uh, the point of Threadripper is for a workstation level CPU. It's for 32 or 64 cores or 24 cores, uh, but 64 or 128 PCI Express lanes and four or eight channels of memory. It's not a small form factor CPU. Um, uh, and honestly, uh, a mini ITX AM4 CPU the 3950X with 16 cores, 32 threads, and and 16 PCIe lanes. That's a... If you had told me that two years ago would be coming and beating a 7980XE 18 core chip uh, and could fit it in an ITX form factor, I would have called you just bat crazy. You know, I absolutely would have. So two years down the road to be able to fit that into an ITX box, I don't think you quite grasp how big of a deal that is yeah. <laughs> that that much power can fit there and for that matter there's sfx boards that mount am4 <laughs> ah. you could fit 16 cores 32 threads into something the size of a gamecube or an intel nook yeah now you couldn't have video with that but, but you could still fit it but you could fit it now yeah i mean imagine uh thinking 10 years ago all that being possible right yeah. No right. way. Well, fifteen. Well, ten, 10 years, years ago, had Intel continued with Nehalem as we thought they would, and actually had been giving consumers the, pro the, the products for yeah. the proper prices, that is what we would have had. Yeah, I guess. But they just said, "Hey, guess what? We're going to give you fifteen percent more." You know, seven uh, percent IPC per year. Yeah. And then, a, and then another plus, and then another plus, and then <laughs> another plus. Right. It's X now. <laughs> Yeah, I noticed how all their, their K-series CPUs went to X CPUs because X is more extreme. X, yeah. And then they ran out of Xs, and so they went, okay, X, E. <laughs> <laughs> it's saving in power now. Right. We're helping the environment. Energy efficiency. That's right. It's 9980 XE. Yeah. Right. For extra extreme. <laughs> extreme extra. Yep. Uh, and just to kind of prove and drive home the point of AMD giving way more performance than Intel ever dreamed of at this point in their careers, uh, we have some benchmarks from AMD's Epic 7742, and I am quoting WCCF Tech here in that it absolutely and utterly annihilates the Intel Platinum 8280 at roughly one third the price. Uh, and the graph down below is kind of all you need to know, right there. So if you just click on that and make it a little bigger, maybe, there we go. A lot bigger. Uh, so you can see those two lines in the middle. That's for the Intel Xeon Gold uh, 6252 and the 8280. Uh, and you can see where that performance would land. You can also see on the far left where the 7742 single core sol or single chip solution, so this is a single chip, uh, lands. Up. And it's one third the price but it's not intel it's not intel no and as martha stewart would say it's a good thing <laughs> so yeah amd continuing to rock it and uh there was a report i think it was last week that amd is expected to have 10 percent of the global server market by the end of 2020 and people go well how can they only do 10 percent well you have to figure 
it, they need to justify the expense of upgrading. Yeah. And, and a lot of times there's upgrade cycles for, for data centers and servers and mass deployments and things like that. So 10% in a single year, that's actually really good. Um, and I think I went on record as saying, I think AMD will have 50% inside of three years. Yeah, yeah you gotta imagine, it's essentially a $6,000 processor doing the exact same as a $20,000 processor. Right. That's essentially what you're doing. Right. Oh yeah, I'm a data center. Oh, let me see, something that's $6,000 and performs three times the, as good? Right. Yeah. I'll take that. I'll take that. Uh, yeah, give, me, give me 10. Yep. Yeah. And uh, Intel had a little bit of news this week. They announced uh, some Xeon W workstation processors, uh, oh, both, in a, both in a 2066 uh, socket and the uh, uh, 3647 socket. Uh, so this is the Xeon W2200 series and 3200 series chips. Um, Finally coming to the consumer market. Well, they've, they've had these, these sockets on the consumer market before, uh, but they were grossly overpriced. Uh, they were met with a very equal price drop to what we saw from the uh, the i7 and i9 extremes that just dropped for the 2066 platform. Uh, so John very conveniently highlighted the little graph right there, or a little chart. Um, <coughs> starting with uh, the Xeon W2200, starting at $294, but for four cores. So $300 for four cores. Really? Really? That's a, yeah, 700 bucks a core. Really? <sighs> Uh, going all the way up to 1,333 for their 18-core uh, Xeon, uh, which, for those who don't know, is just a, uh, a 9980XE in ECC clothing. Uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a 9980XE that allows e error-correcting memory. Uh, and they're charging a $500 premium for that, up from $900 to $1,333 for the same chip. But you're getting more cores. Right. Jeff. Now, if you look over at AMD, both Ryzen and Threadripper both support ECC out of the box. They don't uh, certify it for ECC, but it's enabled. You can use it. It's a it's a thing that's enabled. Uh, and then the 3647, it goes all the way up to $7,400, which is nice because it's not $10,000 anymore for oh. their 28 core chip, but it's still only 28 cores. Uh, so basically, it's the same thing that Intel announced last week in a Xeon flavor for about 50% more. <laughs> yeah. It's still a price drop. I, I, I can't say it's not, and I can't say, oh, thank you, Intel, for this gift you've bestowed upon us. Yeah. But it's still it's an vastly in, it's more It's an expensive Intel than, thing. It right. just sounds like an Intel. <laughs> it, it's still vastly more expensive than the competition. And... They're, it almost seems like they're just trying to get as much money as possible to continue to have some revenue income. Um, and be like, look, 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 look at us. Don't look at AMD. Look, price cut, price cut, price, price cut, cut, price cut. Yeah, uh, look, we dropped our prices. We dropped our prices. Don't worry about Don't look yeah. at our competitor. Yeah. They're cheap, cheap, cheap. Yeah, it, it, Intel's going, you can get 28 cores for as little as $7,300 now. And, and AMD's going, that cute. We That's cute. We sell our 64 core for $6,500. Yeah. Weird. Huh. Triple the amount. <laughs> oh wait, that's for the Epic chip. No, no, no. You can get the upcoming Threadripper three for like three thousand. <laughs> eh, eh. Who cares? <laughs> so Jeff, here at Craft Computing Studios. Yeah. How good's your security? Uh, it's not too bad. <laughs> How's your uh, recycling? You recycle? I do recycle. Cycle. Yeah. Do you uh, have some maid come in and clean up after? You do it all yourself. I do it all myself. You do it all I, yourself. I am very self-sufficient in the office. Good for you. Good yes. for you. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, like, there are big box companies that, well, they have to hire people to come in clean and, and take out the trash and do some of the recycling. We, we have a maid service that, that we hire. <laughs> that, uh, that, that does... Here at Craft Computing. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, my, my company, we, you know, we outsource oh, okay. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. As, yeah. I'm, I'm sure yours does as well. Yeah, actually. actually, ours is in-house. Is, is it in-house? It's in-house. We, okay. Yeah, we just hire. Okay. That's their job. Yeah. Um, well, Valve, uh, uh, apparently this has nothing to do with them hiring anyone, but someone stole $40,000 worth of just goods. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so, I, I, I love... 
penetration testing, <laughs> talks, DEFCON, oh, yeah. lock picking. Es- I, essentially, the whole sneakers, the movie. Right. From the 80s, if kids yeah. today probably don't no. know what I'm talking about. Hacker. Hacker. Yeah, there you go. They still don't know what you're talking right. about. Right, I know. I know. Angelina Jolie. <laughs> when she was good looking, the first movie. <laughs> that nice pixie haircut. Yeah. Right. Um, anyway, so uh, I, I love stories about penetration testing or, or uh, you know, even robberies, how someone got in yeah. and did something because everyone always thinks, oh, it's like this high tech espionage and they tricked the cameras. Yeah. Or something. It, it's not Mission Impossible. They're coming through the ceiling, no. spray painting cameras or, or putting their cell phone in repeat video. Right. This dude literally walked into the valve office, broke into the valve office, carrying a blue rolling recycling bin, bin behind him. <laughs> so everyone has one that they drag out to the curb every week. Uh, yeah. And uh, and proceeded to fill it up with forty thousand dollars worth of computers, merchandise, software, collectibles, yeah, etc. And walked right out the front door. Yeah, no one knows. Like, oh yeah, you're just a garbage service. See you later. Yeah. Right. No, it was after hours, and but he was seen on video, and they went, oh, it's just the garbage service. No yeah. big deal. And he literally just walked out the door with it. What he had done was he parked his car like around the corner from Valve's offices at a GameStop, and then he stopped with the bin there, unloaded all the crap into his car, and took off. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Now, they said nothing really, like, um, serious got stolen. No leaked software. No. Right. Uh, nothing. I don't think the guy actually probably knew what he was looking for. I think it was. Maybe he knew what he was. I don't think it was espionage. It was just someone looking for some money. I wonder what was in his loot box. <laughs> that could have been an ing. Yeah. <laughs> Any cool hats? <laughs> I, I'm betting it's mostly he went around and just like took all these like figurines mm-hmm. and things off people's desks. Like mm-hmm. I know that's a collector's item. I know because right. he was caught uh, going to other game stops and other video game stores, pawn shops, selling items. Right, and it, that kind of makes me think. Okay, these are probably figurine sculptures, right. prototypes mm-hmm. of things. You know, he even probably said, "I work at Valve," or "I'm right. an ex-employee." This is my. Right. Things, so. so yeah, he was going around to random used game stores and and pawn shops and things like that, trying to sell this merchandise. Yeah. Uh, and he was eventually caught. And uh, and in fact, they looked up the security footage from the GameStop cameras where he was had parked his car and saw him wheeling the bin up and yeah. hauling everything into the car. <laughs> it literally, it was just, oh, hey guys, see you later, bye. Yeah. Nothing's wrong. And again, dude, this is. Uh, there were other major players. It wasn't just like Valve and they. It's their own building. There are other big security teams. What other companies they said that are in there? Right. Um, uh, yeah, there was uh, Samsung, Epic, uh, Unity, Unity. Yeah. yeah, they all shared the same building. So it was just he went to a floor. Yeah. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah, and and walked into Valve and stole forty thousand yeah. dollars of stuff. So I mean, yeah. now now again, Valve did reiterate that uh, that nothing beyond monetary value was taken. Uh, so it means, a uh, quote from the article, that it doesn't appear he stole any company secrets or a demo of Half-Life 3. <laughs> that uh, was the uh, wink wink. Damn it! Yeah, so he gave it the old college try. He was trying to get us something. But uh, but yeah, unfortunately, Half-Life 3 still not confirmed. Well, he may have saved that one. That's right. Stuck it up special playing. It's in that place where I put that thing that time? Yeah. That's a hacker's reference if you didn't catch it. See how I can wink like that? You can't wink. That's really I can't. Funny. I know, right? I can't. <laughs> can't. But you know who else can't wink? Yeah. It used to be Half-Life 2. That's right. The uh, the characters. That is a slick transition. You did right. There. right. That is a slick transition. Well, you know what? They can blink now. They can blink now. They can blink now. By the way, no one caught my, my Twitter Easter egg of uh, don't blink, you'll miss it. Oh. Aha. Yeah, so uh, with the transition of Half-Life over to the Source engine, it introduced, as you might imagine, changing game engines mid-cycle of a, of a piece of software, yep. a number of bugs into it. One of the side effects that actually worked to the advantage of the game was the fact that some of the NPCs could no longer blink, including the mysterious man at the beginning. Yeah, he just <laughs> stared at you. So if you played the original... His his facial animations were a little bit more lifelike, and it's because he took the occasional blink. If you've played it since 2014, after it went to the Source engine, he just stares at you. Rise and shine, Mr. Freeman. Rise and shine. <laughs> right. 
Very uh, creepy. Very creepy. And and his eyes were gazed open the whole time. And some people thought it might have been a change in the game. No, in fact, it was a bug with the Source Engine transition mm -hmm. that NPCs can no longer blink. That yeah. animation will no longer trigger within them. Yeah. Now, this technically was fixed with some <laughs> other... Uh, downloadable content you know some um okay what not patches mm -hmm. unofficial patches um but now it has officially been fixed by yes. valve yeah um say and, and then so if you get it now it will be uh officially fixed right uh so the bug fix for this one uh the official update went out two days ago uh or sorry about two weeks ago this was fixed so I, i'm a little late to the party uh but uh, the bug notes say that it fixed a hitch when saving games, fixed Steam VR running when entering the settings menu, uh, fixed missing sounds on Combine Soldiers, and fixed NPCs not blinking. So uh, for those wondering where Valve has been spending all of their, uh, their engineering and software development time, it's to make sure that the Mysterious Man can blink. Yes. Not Half-Life 3. Not Half-Life 3. Which could still be. Or maybe Half-Life 3. Yes, we don't know. Maybe they needed to fix that bug so they could continue on with Half-Life 3. May, yeah, maybe that bug is in Half-Life 3. That could be. Yeah. Like, I hope the Mysterious Man doesn't blink anymore. <laughs> I think that's just... I think that's <laughs> that just made it so character. much better, yeah. It kind of almost came more of off of as a Resident Evil. Like, is everyone zombies? Is everyone dead? Half-Life. Yeah. I mean, it kind of makes sense. Right. Totally. Totally does. So, we are both fans of South Park over here. Um... What's your favorite South Park episode? Oh, Let's there's there's that. there are so many. I I will say, I still there are a few shows that late at night, I don't watch. Like I'm gonna watch something new because I don't have the t attention span right. to watch something new late at night. Yeah. Um, it is South Park, Futurama, Rick and Morty. Mm -hmm, yep. You know. Did you know there's actually a subreddit for falling asleep to Futurama? Really? Yeah. There's a <laughs> subreddit dedicated to people who my last waking memory last night was watching this scene. <laughs> That's stupid. And what's really funny is when I discovered it was uh, my wife and I rotate through those various yeah. shows. You, you can throw in Family Guy and American yeah, Guy. Yeah, exactly. all, all the Seth MacFarlane ones. Yeah. Um, but uh, but we were jamming on Futurama uh, and we just set it to random on, on my Plex server and, and, and let it play and set a, a one or an hour and 90 minute sleep timer and we drift off to sleep. And uh, and I found that subreddit. It was like that's exactly what I'm doing right now. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And uh, South Park, though, the, out of all of our shows, probably have some of the biggest controversies. Yeah. Oh, of course. I, I mean, and they just started their latest season. I don't even remember what it is. What is twenty something? I don't. Twenty third. Yeah, twenty two, twenty third, something like that. Says so someone on just chat. Yeah. Hit us up. Second episode. Mm -hmm. Second episode in. Yep. Phew. Now now they're officially banned in China. <laughs> Uh, so basically, the premise of the story, as I, as I understand it. Oh, you never watched it. The, the, I, the, I I haven't watched this one. It's yet. a great. Is episode. it great? It's a great. Episode. I figured it would be great. It's a great. Episode. Um, is basically it's following the story of how Hollywood studios change their releases so they can get their videos into the Chinese market. Yes. And this happens all the time. Probably the most famous recent one was um, the. Uh, uh, Red Dawn, the oh, Red yeah. Dawn remake. Yeah. Because if you remember the original Red Dawn, it was the Chinese invading the U.S. Yes. Well, the original... No, the original was... <laughs> was it Chinese or Russia? Might no, have been Russians. It was Russians. That, that Russians, that's it right. It was Russians, that, yeah. And then, and then in the new one remake... It, it was, was North Korea. It was North Korea. The, the original script and the original shooting of the Red Dawn remake was the Chinese were invading. Yeah. They actually had to go back through and either digitally retouch the Chinese badges to, to be North Korean... Or they actually had to reshoot certain scenes where they were referencing that it was the Chinese landing. Yeah. Um, and so, and they did that because China said, we will refuse entry of this video and it will not be played in China. Yeah. And China's such a large market that this studio had to oh, concede yeah. and say, well, we need it released in China. Yeah. If you ever follow like movie, uh, you know, gross income <laughs> levels or anything... America actually isn't that big up for a global. Well, we're growth. like third. We're like no. Well, yeah, and we're, yeah. we're the bottom third. Right. It, it well, they include all of Europe usually, mm -hmm. but um, there's the American growth, there's the European, and then there's just China, and China is usually the number one for a lot of a special like Marvel sci-fi stuff. 
usually if a movie does bad in America, mm-hmm. you go and you wonder why did they make a sequel to that? It was well, because it did well in China. And they made so much money there that they're like, hey, we can afford now to do a sequel because, well, Chinese people enjoyed it. And we could probably profit on that. Let's kind of market it more toward them. What is it? Um, the Kaijus, the giant robots fighting. Oh, yeah. Um, what were that? What was that movie? Uh, Pacific Rim. Yeah. Pacific Rim yeah. series. The first one tanked in America. It did okay. Yep. And they created a second one. What's funny is I was going to the east of the giant robots fighting, and I went, Packy! You know, the, the, <laughs> yeah. the Hugh Jackman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, the uh, Rock'em yeah, Sock'em oh, Robot God. Yeah, that was horrible. <laughs> I'm surprised that didn't do... Uh, God, what was that called? That's always on TV. I thought it was too. Packy. No, it's not called Packy, but yeah. Um, I think it's called Robot. I don't remember. Anyways, but yeah, then they released the second one, Horrible Here in the United States. You know, successful in, in, in Asia. Hugh Jackman robot. <laughs> Real, Real steel. steel. Chappy. 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 Is, Chapp- no, well, that's a different one. That that That's the um, the people who did... Hugh Jackman, Sigourney Weaver. No, no, no. He He's a voice. It's a different one. Real Steel is... Okay. Cha- Chappy is... Real is, Steel is the fighting one. Real Steel is... Okay. Yeah. And that's right. Chappy is the... Chappy is the one who's like... Is the iRobot kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One of those... That, that British rapper... Female and yeah. male rapper, they're, they yeah. star in that. Okay. But anyways, back to the South Park. <laughs> Packy. Yeah. The chappy Packy. Uh, yeah, so they got, they got banned in China because essentially uh, the, the premise is that Stan becomes a successful metal, uh, ha- starts a metal band that becomes successful. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not that, but yeah, that's funny too. Um, and they want to make a biopic and they keep mm-hmm. changing... The style, like, oh, this is not going to work for China. This is not going to work for right. China. And it, it's hilarious. But I think one of the better parts was the response. The apology. The apology was hilarious. From, from Trey and Matt. Um, so, and I quote, Like the NBA, we welcome the Chinese censors into our homes and into our hearts. We, too, love money more than freedom and democracy. Z does not just like like does not just look like Winnie the Pooh at all. Uh, tune into our 300th episode this Wednesday at 10. Long live the great communist party of China. May this autumn sorghum harvest be bountiful. We good now, China? Wink, wink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. That was hilarious. Yeah. So the I think it was like the day after this episode aired mm-hmm. oh, on the Chinese streaming service is yeah. what it was. All South Parks were just gone. Gone. Vaporized. Not found. Yep. Um, oh. Hilarious. Yeah. Uh, this is an interesting time in U.S. and China relations. Uh, and I said this was going to get a little bit political, and, and this was kind of the intro to that. Yeah. Uh, this is the that, humorous part. There have been like three major stories that have broken into international incidents in about the last week or week so. Or, yeah. um, so South Park was kind of actually lost in a lot of this. Uh, the NBA actually started this off with the Houston Rockets general manager tweeting out support of Hong Kong, support of the protests going on to support democracy and keep, yeah. and keep their freedoms. Um, because if you're not following the, the incidents that are happening down there, it's it's violent. And, and the Chinese Communist Party is portraying the Hong Kong uh, uh, protesters as violent terrorists who yeah. are, you know, threatening the, the sanctity of China. And, and it's really not a good situation at all. Uh, so you have the Houston Rockets general manager coming out in support of the Houston protesters, and immediately the, the Communist Party of China is saying, we are breaking off deals with the NBA. You will not be promoting anything within within China anymore. You will not be playing games here. You will not be promoting events. You will not be touring. Yeah. Uh, which was actually, NBA, it's actually a really big deal. It's a billion dollar industry. It's, yeah, it's a in billion. China. I mean, uh, they're huge. Yeah. Asia and, and basketball all of Asia. There, but, there are a number of NBA stars who will go and do summer tours in the off season in inside of China. Here, here in Portland, uh, Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum both do tours in, in China. Uh, CJ McCollum has a Chinese shoe deal. Yeah. Uh, and and so this is not a a small deal economically. Um, and I get the NBA trying to toe a little bit of a line and do not miscontray or 
you know, misinterpret what I'm saying here. I, I am not standing up for the Communist Party of China and their egregious refusal to acknowledge basic human rights. Um, what I'm saying is the NBA does do a good amount of business in China. And particularly the athletes do a good amount of yep. independent business in China. And while the Communist Party is very, very anti basic human rights uh the people who live there still are looking for entertainment products still are looking for for basketball and so yes the chinese party is doing something bad but at the same time if you're an entertainment product trying to just bring entertainment yes you have to deal with the government to do that but yeah, yeah, no, they, you know, yeah. It, it, it's it, it's yeah. a really weird line. This is, you... Yeah, this gets into the whole like, oh, do we want to talk political? Do we not? I mean, because right. was it the NBA or was it the coach, the individual coach's right. opinion? And and so the NBA's official statement was uh, the general manager's views do not portray that of the Houston Rockets or the NBA. However, we as the NBA stand by the individual rights of the general manager to voice his individual opinion. Yeah, and that statement though, right there is probably more what upset the, the and it Chinese. totally did it yeah. totally did it, it totally upset people in the US and uh, in before craft computing expanded China thank you <laughs> support I appreciate it um, my viewership is quite low in China <laughs> don't worry about it you know surprisingly I mine is too <laughs> <laughs> I get hops and brews numbers over in China <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> we're equals over there that's right um but I'm gonna start doing more Chinese beer. But as far as an entertainment product, it's it's hard for me to say don't do business in China because the government is bad there when it's not necessarily the government's giving you money for the product. It's the people who are. Yeah. You and and you have to play ball to be in that market. You're you're an entertainer. Right. And, you know. And 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 so I don't necessarily see this as just a money grab and and f you to the people of China. I see this as allowing the individuals in the NBA to go do Chinese tours and, and shoe deals and yeah. things like that and make themselves money. And, you know, China is a basketball loving country. And, and I do appreciate that aspect of it. Um, but uh, then we lead into more of the gamer side of the story, yeah. which has also become an international incident. In fact, uh, Oregon Senator Ron Wyden has spoken out against this, uh, against Blizzard. And, and this is where it turns from this small little dust up into a major this was interesting too, international yeah. talking point um so if you haven't been following uh blizzard banned a hearthstone professional player because he also voiced support of hong kong protests and i believe it was a twitch stream it was a twitch stream he did it in a bit more radical way yes um, but the interesting thing he is... He wasn't just retweeting a, He wasn't a re retweeting anything or anything like right. that. But uh, but I found the more interesting thing, he's a citizen of China. Mm -hmm. So it's not that it's some American, European gamer right. trying to support... No, it's he's fighting for his own personal rights. Right. Um, now, technically, because he is in, uh, under contract with Blizzard, he did break Blizzard rules. Yeah. But those rules are pretty whack. Here is where it starts to draw some lines. And, and, and it's why I'm giving the NBA a slight pass in that it's not necessarily just the Houston Rockets or just the NBA conducting business mm -hmm. in, in China. It's individual players who are contracting with companies and, and selling their likeness to individuals directly in China as an entertainment product. Um, whereas... And, and their official employers are obviously the NBA and, and U.S. based. But just because you're C.J. McCollum of the Blazers doesn't mean you can't be C.J. McCollum endorsing a shoe deal over in China yeah. as an entertainment product. As I, I, I'm and a so, basketball player. And so I understand the NBA kind of towing that line. I might be in the minority there, but I understand it. Um, what Blizzard did in banning a professional player, Chinese national or not... Uh, is blatantly wrong. And the reason it's blatantly wrong is you are a U.S. company and you are only being represented as a U.S. company. The individual may live in China, but as a U.S. company, you still have to uphold the rights of people who are using your service. 
for the locale that you're in, not the locale that they're in. Yeah. And by by Blizzard banning Hearthstone professional player as a U.S. company for voicing his opinions against communism and pro-democracy is abhorrent. And and Ron Wyden agreed and said just as much. Um, uh, I think he had a quote in here. Uh, Blizzard chose it's willing to uh, humiliate itself to please Chinese Communist Party. No American company should censor calls for freedom to make a quick buck, end quote. Yeah. Um, that is fairly powerful language uh from from a standing center and it's this isn't a partisan issue uh ron wyden and i believe a republican from massachusetts are voicing the same identical opinion and uh that if you are an american doing business within america and globally you have to uphold the rights of your citizens yeah well what's to voice their opinion yeah what's interesting too is uh they even banned the twitch streamers they did they, they banned the hosts that he was on the show of. and what's interesting too is if you watch the clip that they post the hosts themselves uh right we can even they they have no clue what's going on mm-hmm. they they sit there and automatically hey whoa 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 we heard it boom cut the commercial right we, this is unexpected we don't know that and now other people are out of a revenue stream. Right. You know, right. Uh, I don't, I think they said though, he only, they only banned him for a year. Mm-hmm. I don't think they banned him for life, but right. they banned him for a year. But essentially, no team's going to pick him up. Right. No, no, no one's going to want to play with him. Right. You know, unless he goes to a completely American team. And they're just doing the whole thing of, okay, they're probably, Blizzard's probably just looking at it as a numbers game. Look, we're, we do X amount of business in China. We probably mm-hmm. do way more in China than we do in America. Mm-hmm. We have to appease those people. Right. And and, that's horrible. Right. And and Skull uh, brings up a very fair point. The NBA took a very politically neutral statement. I don't blame them either. They basically said the coach doesn't speak for the team or the league. Blizzard, Blizzard definitely drew a line with the announcers. Yeah. And, and I fully agree with that. And, uh, and it's almost as you can't even speak of the subject. Right. And you're sponsored with us or you're part of us. You speak of it, fired. Right. Right. You know, because you put us in a bad light because someone's going to Google you mm-hmm. and then they're going to see you're attached to us. Right. That that was basically Blizzard's reasoning mm-hmm. is you cannot blemish Blizzard. Right. At all. Right. In, in any case. Right. And you're blemishing Blizzard. So... It's a sticky situation. And, and like I said, the reason I, I stick up for the NBA a little bit is they are still sticking up for the individual's rights while still maintaining a business relationship with China, which they are kind of allowed to do, but they're not like firing the Rockets GM Mori or they're and they're not Yeah, that would they're, be they're not banning players from traveling to China or or, you know, releasing them of contract if they speak out again. They're allowing their players to speak. Yeah. And, and and that's really what this is about. You're still allowed to do business over there, especially <laughs> as an entertainment product. Well, I, I think it's more of they probably publicly said that, but they that I'm I wouldn't be surprised if internally they gave a warning. Do not do this. Right. I'm saying, shut up, don't say mm-hmm. anything. You want to keep your job? Right. You know, you're making a million dollars a year. Mm-hmm. Just shut up. <laughs> and I wouldn't necessarily be surprised, but at the same time, they're probably not telling them you know, you're going to be fired if you continue doing this. No, yeah, I, I, I don't think they're doing that, but I think they're, they, I think internally they're probably hinting it, and publicly they're saying, look, we support everyone, right. and they <laughs> technically have the right to do it, and, you know, we technically have the right to not renew their contract next year. Yeah. You know, I'll tie it with it. If they did decide to start <laughs> really voicing opinions. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, yeah, yeah. whatever. Uh, Richard says, I'm close to this story. I'm, I live in Houston and I'm a long life Rockets fan. Uh, sorry about uh, forcing Westbrook to, dr- to join your team. I'm really curious how that's going to work out for you. Well, yeah. They did, Blazers did lose the first game. Uh, or was that? That was, was a preseason. Pre- preseason, yeah. yeah. And so. CJ and Dame played 15 minutes. Nikola Jokic didn't play at all for, yeah. for them. Still waiting on Nurk to come back from injury. Uh, a lot of good signs, though. A lot of really good signs. I'm assuming you're gonna to want to go a lot more this year now. Yeah, of course he is. <laughs> I will drink all the pumpkin beer you bring, buddy. <laughs> That's why I'm allowed on the show. John gets me Blazers tickets. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's an interesting time in China. It's an interesting time globally. Um, 
I'm definitely curious to see. And and these are three stories that stacked up one right after the other, right after the other. Yeah. Uh, with the NBA, with Blizzard, and and with uh, South Park. So tensions are definitely very high with these protests. Yeah. Uh, and um. Yeah. It. Even an interesting time in the PC space, as you know, there there are some companies that are centered in Hong Kong. There are some some industries that are centered in in Shenzhen. Yeah. Uh, so could be an interesting time. Could be. Yeah. Probably. Yep. You know, we'll see. So. All right. I think that's enough politics for one day. Yep. Uh, Sony confirms the PlayStation Five. And I love the name. It's so. Original. Yes, they are calling it dun 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 the PS5. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, no way. I, I, I at least I applaud their name scheme better than Intel. Yeah. Or AMD. Like, it's not the PS4 X A75 GTR. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, or the iPhone XS. You know, at least, uh, yep, it's number five. Yep. I, I'm going to love in, you know, 100 years. PlayStation 2000. Oh, I love you, PlayStation. Thank yeah. you. I, I <laughs> keep, know I know which version I have. Keep on keeping on. <laughs> keep on. Really? It's, it's really, yeah. Kids, I remember playing on the PlayStation. <laughs> my, my favorite name was when they went from the PlayStation to the PS1, and it was spelled out O-N-E. Yeah. That's actually my favorite name from them. Really? Because that, it was very unique. Yeah. And, and and so it was gamery. It was futuristic. It, it was really cool, all spelled out. They had a cool logo to go with it. Um, uh, PS Five, yeah, it's it's fun. You know, it's one better than the four, which is one better than the three. But you know, I I, I do like the the spelled out. You know, P, yeah. P S F I V E. I think would have been cool. So, but what do I know? I'm not in marketing. Well, actually, I kind of am. <laughs> So a uh, little bit of uh, information, not much has been released about this. Um, it's going to be a 4K Blu-ray, still disc reader. Shocker there, 100 gig discs. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, four, four layer Blu-rays, four not, layer not Blu a shock. Yeah, not a shock there, so it's still gonna load just as slow. I think it's actually 96 gigs. Yeah. They're rounding up. Uh, yeah, whatever. It's gonna come with a solid state. They didn't say the size though. Yep. Um, they do say though that you're going to have more control over what gets installed. So you have to install the game to the system, but you can install individual parts of the game. So if you just want to play the single player mode, you can just install that single part. That's uh, that's kind of how I, I grasp. Or I just want to play multiplayer. Okay, you can just you can install the multiplayer features and that's it. Here's the thing, is the game assets are what takes up space, and you need all of the game assets to play single player, and all of the game assets to play multiplayer, with the exception of some specific models. So maybe you'll save a gig out of, like, 27. I just stand... Who the hell cares? Now, now the, the big thing they seem to really be toting... Hey, Sony, storage isn't that expensive. <laughs> just give us a 4 terabyte drive. <laughs> yeah, I'm betting it's going to be, like, a 500 gig drive. I know it will be. You know, it's... it's and it's insulting at this point. It is. It's like, why? At least, at least a terabyte. Give us a terabyte. When when the Xbox 360 was released and it came out in the arcade version with a 256 megabyte proprietary memory card or a 30 that gigabyte drive, horrible. that was a slap in the face. That was and that was 12 horrible. years ago. Yeah. Um, now the cool thing they're saying though is the big innovation of this system, really on top of the graphics card. It's supposed to be the controllers. Mm -hmm. The controllers are supposed to be super cool. They have, and I forget what it was, but essentially it's the joysticks are going to be, um, I think like force driven, mm -hmm. semi, semi force driven, which I think could be kind of cool yeah. in, in the sense of like, okay, I'm, instead of having a steering wheel, it can actually have some blowback. Right. You know, some, some resistance similar yeah. to, uh, 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 you know, NVIDIA racing wheel. Right. Um, Logitech. Lo oh, sorry, Logitech. <laughs> NVIDIA. Uh, NVIDIA. I didn't know they were in the peripheral <laughs> market. <laughs> but then that got me thinking. Okay, most of these controls are about 50 bucks, and that gear system in that tiny little control is probably going to be plastic. Yeah. Get, get, get broke. Right. Get, get, get broke. Yep. You know, um, or... or <sighs> there, there's a reason actual force feedback wheels and, and joysticks are hella expensive. Like, the cheapest one I think that, my, that Logitech ever developed was about $80. And it was, um, I forget the name of it. I have one somewhere. Yeah. But Logitech has a force feedback joystick. And it's really weak. It's basically a rod that 
punches against the the side of the joystick, and so you get a little bit of pop 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 as you move around. Yeah. Right. And it's not actually true resistance. It's it, it's not spring, but it's also not like you know yeah. servo driven. Um, and so it, I'm curious to see what it actually feels like when it's actually released. I'm curious to see if gamers actually like the feeling because there's not a lot of travel on a game joystick. And, no. and if I'm trying to do a precision maneuver and all of a sudden you're going pop, 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 pop and now, you're popping me around. Now, if, eh. if, if it's a feature you can turn on and off, yeah. maybe that might be cool. Right. But... I, and in I, some I, games I can get it, but if you're a competitive gamer or you're playing online and you're playing Rocket League, I don't want all of a sudden yeah. my controller to go pop and you, all of a sudden I'm turning the but wrong But I, I guess in like a sports game be, uh, or something like that, like if they still have the tracker system in these controllers and I'm doing like a, a pull arrow pull uh, bow mm -hmm. pullback or, or something, mm -hmm. you know, some tension on that actually would be kind of nice. I could see that. Ooh. Becky bringing out the big guns. Boulevard deep uh, steep drop. What are you talking Nitro Coffee Stout. Wait, big Guns, my she went down. Right. 18.8% .8 is what she was drinking. That's true. Uh, yeah. Becky's going to be smashed. Yeah. You do you, Becky. Becky, you put the kids to bed already, though, right? I, I'm assuming so. Yeah, and we can say goodnight to them. By the way, if they're not in bed already, get in bed. It's get past in bed, bedtime. yes. You hear me? All right. All right. Uh, I've actually never had a steep drop, but it sounds amazing. I, I love nitro stouts. Yeah. Uh, I do have a nitro beer I could bring. Ooh. It, it is not a stout, but it is a cocktail-inspired nitro. It well, is you're a, right up in my wheelhouse. It is then. a um, 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 white Russian nitro. Oh, I, yes. It's the nitro. left hand. The left hand. I've been wanting to try that. I have a can of that. I, I can, think that's I, a video. I might, I might, we might do something with I that. I think that's a video. That might be something. Anyways, um, but yeah, and then uh, they're saying, you know, USB-C charging. That's yeah. Bad. But that's all that's been released, and they're saying uh, PS5 or yeah will be released or be out for the holiday season 2020. That's correct. So that is all the news they have released yeah. about it. Nothing, no stats, no nothing. Right. But uh, it's official, and uh, yeah. I'm sure year. we'll be hearing from Xbox and Nintendo of some sorts. Yep. Not Nintendo. I, th I think they probably won't be for the I think Nintendo's pretty... Nintendo follows their own path. Anyway. Yeah, they're... They, they do what they want. They're about a, two years behind everyone else. Right. They seem to do Xbox and a PlayStation co you know, within eight months of each other, mm -hmm. and then Nintendo a year and a half after them. Or just whenever they Or like whenever, it. yeah. Um, so I recently got a couple of controllers that I thought you might be interested in. Very cool. So Very these, these are the 8-bit dough... 8-bit do, whatever you want to call them, uh, game pads. Yep. Um, this is kind of a dystopian future of what might have been had Nintendo and Sony continued working with each other. Oh, now, yes. Now, for those who don't know, Nintendo and Sony were actually co-opting the Nintendo PlayStation together to bring them out of the car cartridge land of 16-bit yeah. and into the 32- and 64-bit realm um, as early back as 1992. No, I think, so, I, I think they even had a contract with them in the 80s, but... Uh, yeah, it, it, and it might have been. Yeah. Uh, uh, but they were planning on working together. Yeah, um, uh, essentially the Super Nintendo, if I remember correctly, was like Sony was supposed to have a slight hand in that. So, Sony may have had a slight hand in the Super Nintendo. That's always been unconfirmed, but, uh, but it might have had a slight hand in the development there. But Sony was wanting to enter the console market, and Nintendo was wanting to further their own technology yeah. stack, and so why not work together? Yeah. Um, and this actually resulted in an actual prototype. Quite a few, like eight or nine right. prototypes. Yeah. There, there weren't many, but it was an actual prototype that it never made it to market, but it did exist in a near final form. And that is the Nintendo PlayStation. And it is a very weird looking system. Yes. And there's only literally one of them known to exist. Uh, yeah. Uh, it cropped up on Reddit a couple years ago, uh, very famously. Uh, a guy named Cedric brought it. Uh, you know, bought it. Uh, no, he got it from a company that had gone uh, gone defunct, and he it was like in a box in an attic somewhere. Oh, really? And he picked it up and went, "Oh, what is this thing?" And took a picture, and people like lost their collective crap because it had always been rumored that this existed, but no one had ever seen one. Mm. 
Um, but he has a Nintendo PlayStation. Um, now, this has been in the news about two, two and a half years ago, and, and he's been making the rounds with it at different uh, games conventions and things like that. Uh, it was very famously featured on the Ben Heck show because the games were not actually loading off the cartridge. By the way, this has both a Nintendo SNES cartridge as well as a CD reader. Um, and they couldn't get anything to play on it. It kept erroring out, and the sound was garbled and things like that. What they found were some uh, some traces that needed repaired and uh, some capacitors that needed fixed and, and a couple, couple other uh, mods here and there. And Ben Heck actually got this thing functional and, and loading a retail game. Yeah. Uh, as well as a demo disc, I believe, that came with the Sony PlayStation. Or the Nintendo PlayStation. Um, but uh, it's in the news again because Cedric has said he is willing to now sell the PlayStation, sell the, uh, the Nintendo PlayStation, and will uh, actually be putting it up for auction sometime in 2000 or in, in November. Uh, November. November, yeah. So sometime few, in the year 2000. Yeah, some technically. Right. <laughs> uh, 1919. Uh, 2019. Right. But yeah, uh, so yeah, he's going to release it to the highest bidder. He does have a reserve already mm -hmm. in mind in mm -hmm. his head. Um, this is not going to a public auction yet. Right. This is just give me a bid. That's what it's going to be. Right. If it hits it, I'll sell it to you. Now, to be very clear, he has turned down requests to purchase the Nintendo PlayStation of multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yes. And I don't think that's outside of the realm of possibility. This this is uh, I there was another article I was gonna post mm -hmm. of this where the bottom was an Indiana Jones gift of this should be in a museum right <laughs> you know and it really should be it really should be um, but I'm also not gonna disparage Cedric from you hey. know selling us a, a PlayStation for literally what could be a mansion of a house oh yeah no this this will probably break records this, this will probably fetch 250 to 300 to 350 thousand dollars I would not be surprised if PlayStation or Sony buys this um I would be shocked if they did really I would honestly be shocked because this is something that never made it to market this is something that was always rumored that we knew there was a there was a collaboration going on. Um, but I don't think Nintendo or Sony really want to remember this as any part of their history. Yeah. And, I... so, and so, while it's very important to gamers as a collective, as a history, yeah. a, as a what could have been, you know, this is basically a mashup of an SNES and a PlayStation Pro controller. Yeah. This is not that far off of a DualShock SNES pad. It's it's even got the four buttons yeah, on four, top. Yeah. Um, and actually, I've been jamming on this for a while now. I've been playing Rocket League with this the last couple days. Um, but, uh, this is not that far off of what we would have had. Um, but again, I don't think Nintendo or Sony want to remember this. They went their own ways and they have their own products. I don't know, but cause there are still very retro classic, I get, but I guess that's only single, uh, company systems mm -hmm. that are out there that have failed. And this is one of the big dual, mm -hmm. um, ones. I don't know, but I, even as me as if I was a company and I was maybe not as a company, but maybe a CEO of the company mm -hmm. or some employee of the company be like, I want this and I want this for my personal collection. Right. I, you know, I don't think it's going to be some prince in Nigeria being like, I want the latest, this one-off PlayStation because I don't want to buy a Ferrari. And this is not going to be your standard tech nerd buying this. This is mm -hmm. going to be a game enthusiast. Right. Uh, or you're not even a game enthusiast, a billionaire Who's like I like video games. This is the the Michael Jackson wants to throw down a half million dollars to own a piece of gaming history. Yeah, uh, because he famously had an, an entire arcade in his house and and literally every game that was ever made for consoles up until the point of his death. Um, this this is the the super rare games collector. This is this is gonna be like if if LeBron James was like really into video games. Like, right, I want that. Right, it, it it's someone with five hundred thousand extra dollars of scratch. Yeah, exactly. Just like, that wants to have this. Yeah, it's and, like and uh, it's, uh, diamond custom diamond necklace or once in a lifetime or arcade Nintendo system. PlayStation. Yeah, right. Uh, okay, I'll go. Yeah, yeah. Right, and so and but I don't think I think he's gonna get what he's thinking oh i i really do probably a quarter million dollars yeah uh five i would i wouldn't be surprised five somewhere between ten. a quarter and five yeah it's not gonna break one but i wouldn't be shocked if it went for six either uh, you know so. 
depending upon how he advertises, because the article is stating, and I don't know if this is true or not, but they're mm -hmm. saying if he doesn't hit his goal, he will go to an auction house. Right, he will go to a public auction. Right now it is a private auction. He is seeking private bids. Yeah. Uh, he has a reserve. He has a number he wants to hit, and highest bid will win. Um and if he doesn't get the number he is thinking of, he will go to a public auction house, something like eBay or Christie's or whatever. You know who should buy this? Huh. Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> Microsoft should buy this. Like, Our competitors thought of this. Yeah. <laughs> Try not to think about what exactly. might have been. <laughs> Oh, uh, that would be hilarious if they did. That, that. is the theme song for this. Uh, uh, that, by the way, that's like a 1988. God, who, who is that? Blackhawk that sing that song? I don't remember. Is that what was then? We have taken different roads. Oh, I don't even know. You don't even know that song? I don't That's even a great know that song. song. Jeff's gonna go and probably load it, and we're gonna get banned uh, now. What might have been lyrics? Uh, Little, Little Texas. Texas. Excuse me. Little uh, Texas. Yeah. I, I knew. It was, uh, got 1993. Later than I thought. Oh, wow. I thought that was like an 89, 90. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, a little Texas. What might have been? <laughs> well, uh, that's basically it. Yeah. That's all we have. Uh, we got about 20 minutes. About 20 minutes left and one more beer. And one more beer. Um, so if you have any comments, chats, questions, um, anything about what we talked about, want to know from us, hit us up in the chat. Um, if for some reason you're watching this after the live stream, Join Jeff's Discord. You can always ask questions in that. It is a minimum of a dollar. We appreciate more, but, you know, that, hey, that's what you can do. It's probably one of the best Discords you will ever be on. There are so many channels, and each one is super active. These you cans are, are a little pouring hot. like me. These cans are a little hot. Did you see how I saved that? Yeah. No, I didn't. But <laughs> okay. Yeah. Mine immediately. Yeah, there you go. Oh. Yeah. I, see? All right. Uh-huh. See, so, see how I poured that? Not so smart now, are you? Well, I was I was just trying to save it. Yeah, uh, mine's going to have to go down a little That's a nice aroma. Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. That's a, that's just a classic double IPA aroma right there for you. It's phenomenal. Yeah, that's... that's What I like about it, it's not crystal clear, but yeah. I can still see through it. Right. It's just... It's not a hazy. It's not a hazy, but it just it looks like a good body beer. Yeah. But again, join Jeff's Discord. Um, we have all sorts of chatting, talking heads. We talk about previous episodes, what's coming up. Uh, you get exclusive access to all of the people on Talking Heads. Myself, uh, Jeff, Steve, Rhett. You get to see my videos of beer stuff. If you like this aspect of the, the crazy stuff, I'm starting to really do some weird stuff. Some more project-based stuff. More project-based yeah. stuff. Um, people seem to be enjoying that. And remember to subscribe to Hops and Brews here on YouTube Dang. at Becky Poo. Thank you so hey, much. Hey, Becky. Link to Hops and Brews YouTube is down in the video description. And in fact, I make guest appearances there every now and every then. Every now and then. We might do a couple more that we have. Uh, Maybe a left-hand Russian? Maybe. You know what I really want to do, though? Remember that uh, flip? Oh, yes. We need to do the flip. We need to do the flip. We do need to do the flip. Hops and Brews Discord. No, I don't want to do a Hops and Brews Discord. I, I, I think being part of the Craft Computing Discord builds both communities equally. Yeah. I, I, I don't think I have a big enough fan base, and I really enjoy if, kind if, of being almost like a sub yeah. a he, channel. Here's what I will say. If you want to make your own Patreon, you can have them join the Craft Computing Discord. I, I thought about, you know, and even then, I just enjoy doing it for yeah. it, it, yes. the, its sake. And... People on your Discord are like, I will pay you. It's like, no, I appreciate that, but I just, I like having fun. Right. I, I'm not looking to totally do what you're doing. I just, <laughs> and I, if I get to be part of your ride, I'm happy to be part of your ride. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see. Any builds in the forecast? I have three builds in the forecast right now. One of them is John's we alluded to earlier. Uh, it's a Chinese X99 based system. X99, not X79. We're going a different direction. Yep. Uh, 12 core, 24 thread, 32 gigs of memory, and uh, it turned out really nice. Yes, it did. I, I'm I'm really pleased with the way this one Very turned out. Very nice looking. Yes. 
very clean, very crisp and clean. Uh, 179 for a 1440p Dell S3219D monitor. It's a VA panel, but I'm thinking of buying any thoughts. I think 179 is a fair price for that monitor at a VA. You probably get a pretty decent uh, 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 latency on it. Uh, and, and VA, I do really like VA panels. I've got a couple of them around here and they are quite nice. Um, at 32 inch, I'm not a huge fan of 1440p as like a multi-purpose use. I think the pixels are just not quite dense enough for my liking. Uh, but I think it'd be a fine gaming monitor. Uh, and if you're looking for a 32 inch 1440p gaming monitor, I think it's great. Uh, which one is better, Elysian or Fremont? Oh, uh, Eli uh, Fremont. Yeah. For e easily. No, this is a great, just, if you were a home brewer and trying to make a great double IPA. Yeah. Stride um, for this. Yeah. Yeah, th this is the quintessential double. Yeah. Uh, it, it it's is multi. It's hoppy. Yeah. What, I, what I really like, it's citrus notes, but it's not that tropical mosaic citra. Yeah. It's more like Cascade, the, the old earthier. Yeah, it, earth. it, it's super, super rich. Yes. It's what it is. Um, yeah. Uh, could make a Hops and Brews Discord channel here. That's what 10 forward is. Yeah, that's a, essentially <laughs> it. So uh, someone asked, uh, best Star Trek theme song besides... That basically <laughs> leaves none. It leaves Enterprise. Yeah. <laughs> Which is what I put <laughs> that... If you have, again, back to Discord, inside jokes. <laughs> um, I, I will say... I am a sucker for the TNG theme song. But there, there's something about the French horns on on the DS9 that really get me going. Okay, so I actually yesterday finished my run through of TNG. Yeah. Uh, my I bi bi yearly run yeah. through, and I kind of skipped ahead because of Picard coming mm -hmm. out uh, next year, which we didn't talk about. Was Picard uh, actual release date? January twenty third. Yep. So uh, trailer, not super happy with data, but everything else I really yeah. liked. Um. But uh, what was my point? I don't remember. Theme song. Theme song. Um, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, um, other than uh, uh, Enterprise, mm -hmm. uh, um, Next Generation is the only one that I know that has two theme songs. Yes. Two intros. Yeah. And I didn't. I actually didn't realize that till this round through. Yeah. Of like, oh wow, it's not. It's the same song, yeah, but different. It's season one and two, and yeah. then three through seven. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, 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 it's the same song, uh, but the graphics are vastly different. Uh, the the planet drive throughs are vastly yeah, different. Yeah, it, it's essentially the season one and two are very similar to original series of just the ship going well, by. Well, it's the ship, but it's also traveling through our solar system. So yes. you see uh, Mercury, Mina, uh, or Mercury, Venus, Mercury, Earth, yeah. Mars, you know, Jupiter, Saturn, and then all of a sudden the Enterprise comes into view, and then it's the ship zooming by. Just zooming by. Uh, later on, it's galaxies and, and little little star fronts yeah. or, and planet sides and whatnot, and yeah. then you see the ship. And, and, and season three through seven are much longer. Uh, yeah. they're, they're like 15 seconds longer. Um, so yeah, they're two yeah. distinct ones. I, I do agree that... Uh, I, I think the French horns in DS9 evoke a different emotion. Right. The the uh, I'm, I'm going to get a little pep bandy here. Uh, the trumpets in in TNG are very John Philip Sousa. They're very ba, 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 ba. adventurous. Yeah, it, it, it's it's super adventurous. Um, there there's more feeling in in the, there is a sense of awe. Bum, 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 bum. There. There, there's a wonder. There's yeah, a sense of wonder exactly. in, in DS9. I have to disagree, though. Voyager. I Voyager's really good. enjoy Voyager's theme yeah. song. Yeah. I really actually... I, the, the, I, the timpani at the beginning. Dum, 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 yeah. Dum, 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 dum. Uh, it's like, wow. That that kind of almost combined both. It, it is a little bit of a... Yeah. It, it's a wonder yeah. and a sense of adventure. And, and it's just like... In awe, and I really actually like. Oh, it. it also blends into the strings in yes, the center exactly. and builds. Yes, exactly. Oh, oh, and it's great. Oh, you, you, Voyager. Yeah. Voyager number Voy one. Voyager has Voyager probably one. one of the best things. But uh, have you ever watched the video? Of someone complained about the Voyager uh, intro of saying that uh, where the the ship flies through under the ring or yeah. the rings of the planet. Like that's 
completely impossible because no planet that size can have a ring system that size. Oh, shut up. <laughs> I don't care. They, they yeah. debunked the whole intro to Voyager. Uh, Count X says, speaking of vintage gaming, do any of you have a vintage gaming uh, systems of PCs? And they were actually showing these off earlier in, uh, in, in the Discord. I believe uh, Count X has an IBM PC Junior. And there was someone else with a with a PC four slash twenty five, which was a, a three eighty six twenty five megahertz. So, really, so very very Fair. vintage kind of stuff. Yeah, it's actually pretty funny how vintage, how far back vintage people want to go. Uh, I built a couple retro pies for some people, mm -hmm. and they're like, "Can I? Can you get me this game? Right. Can you get me that?" And it's really old games. Yeah. Like we're talking like old Mac games right. and everything. Like. You want to play that? Mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah, I really want to mm -hmm. play that game. More than, you know, they're like, oh, can you give me a PlayStation 1 game or something like that? Like, oh, okay. So it's pretty cool to still see that uh, people are still interested in retro gaming. Yeah. Now, having the actual console is actually even just as cool. Yeah. Um, and uh, 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 Miak, I believe is how you pronounce that, uh, Osus. Uh, DS9, Malcolm McLaren's trumpet is just mind-blowing in DS9. Uh, and that's true. It fades out the French horns at the second half. Yeah. And the crescendo is... And it hits the trumpet at the I, end. You're dead on it with that one as well. No, I think I, that's... My... And, and yes, his, his trumpet is insane. That's why I think all intros of all Star Trek kept getting better. Yes. And then Enterprise... <laughs> And yeah. they're like, oh, let's let's add a whole band to this. Yeah. And it was just alternative rock. Right. And I was like, this, no, I don't like this. No. Uh-uh. No. Yeah. And then they're like, let's redo it midway through the series because everyone's complaining. It's still the same song. You it's made it even worse. It's still junky. Yeah, it's still horrible. Look at this photograph. Yeah, it, was, it was like the Nickelback <laughs> of um, Star Trek. Um, Every the, time I do a man. Now, Discovery, have you heard the Discovery intro? Yes, I have. It's all right. It's more mystery. Yeah. Uh, it felt very Sherlock Holmes. Th there's a couple minors and, and, and some weird augmented stuff. Yeah. And, and I just wasn't a fan. But it, it's very dissonant. Yeah. W whereas uh, the traditional is is very ones, fours, and fives. Uh, and, and even some sixes that are thrown in there. But it's never a minor. It's never it's never No, it's, it's a very bright major. It, it, yeah. It, it, it's upbeat. It's, it's forward thinking. It's forward looking. Yeah. And, and a very... It's optimistic. E even DS9 is being more of the subdued one, where it's 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 mysterious, but it's an optimistic mysterious. Yeah. Whereas Discovery felt a little apprehensive mysterious. Yeah, it felt like something. There's trouble amongst us. And yes. There's trouble in, in, in the woods. Right. You know, it it really felt like background music to yeah. you know, the bad guy. Yep. Uh, I'm then curious of Picard, how they will do that intro. Mm -hmm. Um, God, I just I. I uh, and that's that series is either gonna be the best Star Trek series ever or crush my dreams. I know. <laughs> I I have all these expectations for Picard, and I just don't want it to fail. Yeah. I I have all of this hope and 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 thought. And you know the ratings are gonna be like, oh, it's the ratings are so fantastic because everyone's gonna want to give it that shot. Right. But then like the true fans are gonna be like, Ugh. don't do Game of Thrones. Yeah. Don't. Build my hope up and then stab me in the heart at the end. You know, you know, I was I, like I said, I just finished. What I would have uh, the TNG. What I would love for this series, I think it would be hilarious because now we have the technology to do it. Except so what they're only doing like ten episodes. Ten episodes. Tenth episodes. Q comes in and says, "Oh, that's another trial." Oh. <laughs> and, and they, they, they I've they, thought they, about and that. And they de-age them all, and, yeah. and then they're back to like, "Hey, we did another." <laughs> we, yeah. Psh. We did another trial for you. Yeah. Awesome. That's it. That would have sold me. I, you could have the worst series ever. And it, then, and then it's been three days since All Good Things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, oh yes, yes. That's that's that would make the whole series. Seven of Nine's going. What the <laughs> shit? <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, that'd be awesome. It was just cute. Just, yeah, <laughs> you know, you know. Last fifteen minutes, and, and and Picard goes senile again. Start seeing those people, and yeah, and uh, yeah, that would be awesome. Part of me kind of wants the all good things, Picard. That's that's the senile and delirious the, yeah. old man. <laughs> Whatever disease he, I forgot what it's called already. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Well, basically, I have dementia. Basically. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, All right. That's um, what happens when you just mention anything Star Trek. Twelve minutes us. have gone by. Yeah. <laughs> it was. Hey, what's the what's the, what's the joke? What's the base theme song? Yeah. Oh, we're gonna really get into yeah. this. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, apparently the whole room cheered when he hit the top note during the recording, and I don't doubt it at all. It That is, um, as, as I said, DS9 was my first vote. I, I swayed to Voyager because I remembered Voyager as soon as you started saying the, the, the development of that. Yeah. Oh, God, yes. It, it, yeah, Voyager it, number one. It really does. It, it's a great um, song. But, uh, uh, Jeff, since Red Dead Redemption 2 is coming to PC, are you thinking about getting it? Absolutely. Uh, I will absolutely play through it on PC. And number one... GTA 5 proved that Rockstar really is sinking development dollars into the PC to be a scalable platform, mm. to be playable on a GTX 1050 to a 2080 Ti, and you get every range there in between. I'm really looking forward to this as a new benchmark title. Finally retiring GTA 5 from its, what, 2015 yeah. uh, place in my Four benchmark rotation. Yeah. Uh, more than that, I think. So, so instead, instead, of, I think. instead of crashing cars into buildings, you're going to be crashing a horse? Heck yeah. <laughs> that's right. Robbing a train? That's right. It'll probably be one of the train robbery ones because yeah. that's very, very scripted. Uh, so finding a mission that's 100% scripted as far as where all the elements are and, and, and repeatable as far as benchmarks go, I'm, I'm looking forward to. But uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 was an amazingly well-written game uh, and, and plays very well. And I hope I hope it's as good on the PC and even better on the consoles than, than it was. Um, and uh, no, you, li- you like it? Was just wondering. Absolutely. Uh, what is this you're talking about? What is DS9? Deep Space Nine. Yeah, Star Space. Trek Deep Space Nine. Yeah. Star Trek Voyager. Star Trek Next Generation. Uh, sorry, yeah, we go off the rails. We get very specific well, yeah. when we start talking about that. Um, do I think uh, RDR2 will be worthwhile to benchmark on the PC as GTA 5? Then I think it will be just as valuable, if not more so, into the future. Uh, because they they proved they have sunk dollars into development and into the uh, efficiency of GTA 5. Uh, and, and I expect nothing less out of RDR2. Do, 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 do. Um... Anyway, I don't have a retro PC. I really th- considered buying one. Uh, I've considered sinking a couple hundred dollars into a 486DX2. That's really where I would put my money, is into yep. a 486DX2. Possibly like a Pentium 90. Um, but I think Pentium 166 gets a little too fast for some of the more earlier retro games in which you can't slow down your CPU cycles without just flooding it with useless CPU cycles. Uh because there are programs out there that will say, I'm going to take one in every three CPU cycles, see your 166 is equivalent to 66 megahertz. And it just isn't the same. Yeah. Um, who remembers so- Final Unity? I have the original disc to Final Unity. <laughs> that was my favorite all-time Star Trek game. Uh, Someone asked, uh, what is our recommendation for a good craft coffee beer? Oh, yes. Uh, actually, yeah, there's, first. Uh, there's there's quite a few actually. I have. Um, I'll I'll go off the rails because I know you're gonna you're gonna I know what you're gonna give. Probably. Really? Well, I was actually gonna say like something a little bit off the rails would be uh, Rogues. Rogue. Rogue. Yeah. Rogues Code Brew. Cold yeah. Brew. Um, uh, they, they have a cold brew and they have the cold brew 2.0. They are coffee cold brew IPAs. Yeah, they're they're an interesting IPA. It's a really good one. But if you're looking for just like the stout. Uh, Stones Imperial Coffee Stout, yep. um, Speedway Stout. If you have Speedway's by ale, ales, it's a little expensive, but it's really worth the money. Um, anything Epic's Big Baptista. Yes, uh, those. That's a great espresso stout. Um, and I think even uh, Breakfast Stout Founders, the, the regular one, is yeah, a, just it, straight up KBS. It's, yeah, the, the, no, not even KBS. It, it's just breakfast. Oh, yeah, yeah, the non breakfast. the non barrel aged version of yeah. KBS. Yeah. Um, is a oat oat coffee stout. Yeah. Uh, you can find it for pretty cheap. Those are all really great ones. Mm-hmm. Um, again, too, just go on untapped. Um, yeah. fi- find where you're at. You'd be surprised, actually. Coffee's a really good beer for local breweries to use, and they make really good ones a lot of time. Yep. So even hit up the smaller places. Um, it's the smaller places that actually do surprise you more often mm-hmm. than not. Mm-hmm. Um, so If you're local to Salem, rev it up coffee stuff. Yes. You know, Ratchet yeah, Brewery. Ratchet Brewery. That's a great one, too. Yep. Uh uh, surprisingly, it's like it's like four, four and a half percent, five percent. It's like wow, there's a lot of good coffee in this. Uh, Jeff, as we push for Q4, how are you leaning? Thirty nine fifty X or Threadripper three? That's a tough one because I'm actually personally trying to make that decision. Um, personally, 
probably 3950X. I don't think you're gonna get better performance for value than 16 cores, 32 threads for 750 bucks. Mm. I don't think it's going to exist. Um, and I don't think software is quite there to support it yet. Um, it's going to be a little while before AMD Premiere catches up to multi-threaded. And, and programming for multi-threaded is incredibly hard. And we're going from a generation where two years ago, the majority, or, you know, 30 months ago, the majority of PCs were four cores, four threads, to all of a sudden a world where an eight core CPU can be had for 120 bucks and 16 cores, 32 threads for 700. Yeah. We, we have changed the landscape and thrown it on a 10. And so there are specific workloads that the more cores, the more threads, absolutely. Threadripper, 64 core, four gigahertz on all cores. Yeah. F yeah, you know. Um, but for the mainstream, for the majority of tasks and even high-end workstation tasks and even like video editing, um, there's going to be a lack of return on some of the super high core count chips until programming and software catches up. Um, and so honestly, for most people, it's probably 3950X. So it's probably where I'm leaning. Um, although uh, my video rendering machine that I use down here. Right now it's a 7920X and I, I love this system. It's on an X299 MSI Creation motherboard and it's worked fantastic for me. But again, I am taking advantage of multiple PCIe lanes all across. Um, right now I have an RTX 2080 inside of there um, as well as two AverMedia 4K capture cards and a 10 gig uh, ethernet. Uh, so quite a lot of PCI bandwidth is going through here. Uh, but this is kind of a niche scenario. Yeah. For a gamer, 3950X. And actually, 3700X, probably, is then where I would recommend fine. for a yeah. gamer. Yeah, but you get a little bit cheaper. Yeah. But I got a soft spot for Threadripper and, and Enthusiast Workstations. I, I would love to build me a Threadripper, but it all depends on dollars and cents. And <laughs> You're like, uh, AMD, if you want to sponsor something. Yeah. yeah. I, I am trying to get a hookup for a Threadripper release, but uh, it's it's been difficult for a channel of my size. So. But we're working on it. I mean, I can get one. Uh, 3950X, sure. But what mini ITX platform is going to have 10 gig Ethernet? Honestly, 10 gig Ethernet is starting to gain mainstream adoption for Cat5. I think that adoption is going to happen sometime within the next year or two, where boards are going to start considering that in their standard feature set. Um, so I, I don't think we're that far away. Uh, Adobe software seems to hate high core count. Indeed, it does. Uh, Adobe Premiere, LMAO, we wish it might be reliable. Yeah, I, God, if it could be reliable, I would love it. SMT4 next year, 256 threads? No. No. Just flat out, no. Uh, SMT4, uh, for those who don't know, simultaneous multi-threading is AMD's system. There's talk that you will not have just two two threads per core, but up to four threads per core. Yeah. Um, Again, software has to catch up for that to make any sense outside of multi-simultaneous workload. Um, what do you think so, of the future of 8664 CPUs with more companies adopting the ARM CPU moving yeah. forward? Uh, with the whole merging smartphones and desktops. There's a, there's a push to start merging smartphones and desktops. I think that's more up to software than hardware. Well, I, I think that's more of a, what you're using the stuff for because a lot of times now what they're pushing the ARM stuff for is just your standard laptops or really powerful laptops slash right. tablet adapters. You know, people that just, hey, look, you want to use some form of Word, Google Docs, mm -hmm. you know, typing, Excel. You're not gaming. You're not video editing. Right. You know, you just want to surf the internet and do some file management. I, I will say... I've been trying to find a way to shoehorn this conversation into talking heads. And I'm gonna take your, your, your question and kind of go just a slightly different direction with it. And that is the direction of the Windows kernel. That is the direction of the MT kernel as it relates to hardware and software integration as a whole. Um, the last couple of years, Microsoft has been making some inroads into the open source community. The open source community isn't all that happy about it because Microsoft has the, you know, uh, adopt, you know, enforce, exceed kind of thing where they will adopt a certain technology and then inject proprietary code into it. So you have to use Microsoft proprietary software and 
and then it squashes competition in the open source market. Um, what Microsoft has been doing the last two years has been very counter to that culture. And what I mean by that is Microsoft has adopted the Debian kernel and has integrated it into Windows. You can actually download the Debian kernel and run a native bash shell inside of Windows. You can do it today. You can download a Debian kernel and run bash and do an apt get and, and go to the app Debian depository, repository, excuse me, depository, something different. Uh, and uh, and run native Linux non X apps. You know the the you can't run an X enhanced application, but you can run non X applications natively inside of Windows using a Debian kernel. Um, and so that was kind of big news when it hit. But people went, well, well, why? Why would I do that? Uh, then Microsoft released PowerShell for Linux. They said, here's our PowerShell library. Here's our command library. Here's how it interfaces with all of our software. You can download that and you can run it on Linux today. It's free. Yeah. It's open source. You can download it and you can run it. And you can manage your Active Directory servers from a, a Linux PowerShell interface. Um, and they asked nothing in return. And they didn't change anything on the Linux kernel to make this work. And they didn't say, we're going to manage Linux with PowerShell. They just said, you can download PowerShell and you can use it to manage Windows servers and Windows services. Cool. Awesome. Um, Xbox has opened their platform greatly. You can now, uh, Xbox was the first one to do crossplay. You can do multiplayer across consoles, regardless of console that you have. And Xbox was the first to adopt that because they went, well, it's just a couple lines of code to allow us to connect to Sony servers, so why the hell not? Yeah. And Steam servers and Epic servers and whoever. You know, so they said, why are we sanctioning this off and just holding our own little ecosystem? Let's open it up. Free to the end user. We yep. don't need any more money because it's just a couple lines of code and we're just sending bandwidth elsewhere. Who cares? Um, there's a rumor that's been floating around that the next major revision of Windows, and I'm not talking the the, the bi-yearly, bi-annual yeah, update. Uh, update. What, no, the, I'm talking the next major release of not, Windows. Not Windows 10, but the next Windows. Windows 11 will abandon the NT kernel in favor of a Linux-based kernel. That's, I heard the same thing. And and that rumor has been gaining some steam. It's been gaining uh, some support. It's been garnering praise. And, and people are going, well, this is the end of Linux. No, I think this is the breakthrough for Linux. Yeah, this is the breakthrough through open sourcing and, and, and all independent... Uh, basically, the reason being is the last couple of years, people have been trying to make their programming more universal. Oh, by the way, Microsoft also released .NET as a programming kernel language for Linux. Yeah, you can program in .NET and C plus on Linux. Didn't we talk about that? Like, we did months ago. Yeah, months ago. Yeah. But but again, they released .NET license and duty free for Linux. You can compile a .NET code natively on Linux. That's insane. Um, but there's a lot of thought and, and, and as, as I was getting into the, the mindset of a lot of programmers now is they're trying to make their programs platform agnostic. That is writing for a base code and then developing the front end for whatever operating system or, or kernel it's going to be on. Yeah. And so programming in more universal language and then releasing on multi-platforms at once because Smartphones on ARM and desktops on x86-64 for Windows and desktops and, and mobile operating systems on the Linux kernel on x86-64. Um, there, there have been people who want to traverse between all of those things and use the same exact service on all three. So you think of Dropbox, you think of Google Drive, you think of Google Sheets, you no. think of, of browser-based web applications. Well, yeah, I'm wondering if Microsoft is finally thinking that, look, we're spending so much in development on our own side of, we mm -hmm. have to develop this one app. Okay, we gotta develop it in three different formats. Right. You know, screw this. You know, let's just bite the bullet. You, and, you can launch OneDrive and, and Office 365 inside of Firefox natively. Microsoft also adopted Chromium for the next Edge browser, yeah. which is a platform agnostic browser. And so they've been slowly opening themselves up and not asking anything of those existing communities. No, I, I think the next Windows, as Windows 10 was kind of like trying to be... Windows 7 mm -hmm. and Windows 8.1, the XP, you know, whatever. 
I actually think the next whatever it's going to be called Windows 11, their naming scheme is right just as bad as Intel. <laughs> Windows 3000. Yeah. Um, it has the potential, from what the rumors are saying, could be revolutionary. Right. Uh, of the, like, not open source, but 50, 70% open source. Right. You know, of like, you want to customize the crap out of this? Go ahead and most of your apps run natively. Right. Whatever you want. Right. Don't care. Go ahead. Right. Load it. So so the thought is Windows will replace the NT kernel with a Linux kernel of some sort, whether it's Debian or Red Hat or, you know, whoever. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and they'll just start programming for that. And they might build in a compatibility layer for existing NT stuff. They might not. And, and I've, I've said for quite a long time that Windows backwards compatibility is one of its biggest hindrances um, on why there are so many bugs that are still there. There is still code for 16-bit Windows and MS-DOS 6.22 in the modern Windows 10 code. Oh, yeah. It wasn't like, yeah, I thought it was like DOS like 3. It might be DOS something. 5. Yeah. I think DOS 5 is as far back as the modern okay. code set goes, as far as we know. But there are there are commands that run inside of Windows that will give you DOS-based error messages. Yeah. There are, uh, up until the first release of Windows 10, Program Manager still shipped. The executable for Program Manager from Windows 3.0 still shipped with Windows 10. The same program. Yep. Well, don't break it. It wasn't even used, but <laughs> it was required by some things to be there because of the dependencies it had. And so it, it's this weird thing. Microsoft has proven they are trying to be less of a software company and more of a service company. And how do you get more clients as a service company? You open up your services to multiple platforms. Well, I, and I think that comes back into the And what are the competing platforms? They're Linux and they're Android. Yeah, and, and you, when you open up that ARMS... And Mac, less so. That's the thing. Sorry. It, yeah, it, it really is the Android and Linux. And with all these new small single boards coming out... Mm -hmm. Uh, and then they're coming out to be really powerful boards. Raspberry Pi 4 is incredible. Exactly. You know, those are coming out to be, hey, I can have something the size of my credit card essentially be this little laptop right here. Right. And, and 40 bucks. Right. Heck yeah. You know, versus a $500 right. laptop. Uh, someone figured out how to do the ARM distribution of Windows 10 on a Raspberry Pi 4 and run all of the native store apps on it. Yeah. Like, and like I said... They've already started experimenting with developing, you know, that, that was the NT-based kernel, but pushing onto the ARM platform and pushing on to, to other platforms. And so why not? Yeah. Well, I mean, that even brings back to the Microsoft uh, mindset of a company. Look, we can now develop these lower end systems for the elderly, the older people. Mm -hmm. Like, look, here's a $99 Windows system. Mm -hmm. You just want to chat and surf the internet. Here you go, 99 bucks. This will do it. It's just big. Plug it into your TV. Uh, this is a great question. Jeff, if Microsoft implements the Linux kernel, how can they still go about charging for an open source implementation? You can always charge for an open source implementation with proprietary software running on top of it, as long as the GNU license allows for that. And uh, and a lot of times, uh, Red Hat charges for their software. There, there are many Linux distributions that charge for their software because they run proprietary software stacks on top of a Linux kernel. And so that is totally allowed within the licensure of Linux. Yeah. Um, uh, that being said, I wouldn't be surprised if Windows went to a non-paid version with the Linux kernel. Oh uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised of a NTE or you know, a light. Right. A, a Windows light. What, right. What is the uh, uh, um, what, what is the kernel that you can buy the Windows version now that's downloadable for free, but it's a horrible version. No, the, the basic version. Yeah. I forget. Anyways, but yeah, I, I really think there'll be a very basic version for Windows. Of, hey, you get the very basic features, mm -hmm. nothing unlockable, no no real server feature esque sharing. Right. But that's it. You get the upfront uh, OS system, some of the basic features. It looks very similar right. to to what everyone else has, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have as great as features. You can't unlock this, can't do this, can't share this, can't stream mm -hmm. this or whatever. Um, See, I, I don't think it's going to be that. I think it's going to be the. They may still make a differentiation between Windows Home and Windows Pro because that's what they've always done, which is really freaking stupid. Um, I wish they like would just go free. Eight different versions. Right. Uh, they, they need to reduce their 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 SKU count. That's you know not arguable. 
um, the n number of different licensing methods that you have, the number of different licenses that you can buy, the number home, of different home pro, Office, Office Pro, LTE, LTE X, S X, yeah. EDU, yeah. So, uh, home server, professional yeah. server, enterprise, enterprise server, business. enterprise pro, enterprise yeah. pro server, right. Pack one. Standard e e data center. Yeah. And each one only unlocks one different feature. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's really all it does. Then you have LTSB and LTSC stacked on top of the enterprise licensure. Yeah, it's it's complicated. It's stupid. Um, I, I want them to go back to simpler times of here's the Windows OS. Here's the features we offer. End of discussion. Um, but uh, yeah, it could be really interesting to see what Microsoft does in the next year or two, because I think changes are coming and I think changes are coming that will benefit us all. Uh, and I'm saying that from someone who is an IT professional and is tired of dealing with Windows Enterprise licensure. Yeah. Uh, and from a really hopeful side of, please let this be the end to my nightmare, please. Um, but from the consumer side going, you know what? I like Ubuntu. I'd like to be able to run Steam natively on there and have native DirectX games and not having to go through Wine or Proton or some other yeah. conversion. Uh, you know, a, a software developer writes a piece of software once and it's literally good for all operating systems. Even even OS X is not that difficult to convert from, from a Linux core um, with just a few minor tweaks. And, and if changes are coming to everything else, Mac may adopt not necessarily a Linux kernel, but a Linux compatible kernel. Yeah, maybe uh, a converter or something I mean, like it, that. Yeah. Oh, OS X is is basically a it, it's a POSIX based kernel. Well, I don't know. Uh, Apple really. It's weird. It's they're weird about their weird. what they allow on their systems and everything like that. But again, if all of a sudden your two big competitors are using the same kernel. It might force your hand. Might, but that's the whole point of Apple. Right. Everyone buys Apple for that particular reason. Right. Is it's safe? It's reliable? It's Un tested? It's right. Good to go. You'll never get a virus. Yeah. Until Apple is forced with the well, we signed an exclusivity contract with Intel and AMD for graphics, and all of a sudden we're behind the curve in performance, and professionals literally can't use this. Well. Steve Jobs is no longer running the company, so right. I, I don't think it'll be it'll be a long time before that happens. Well, here's the problem: is they're just doing what Steve Jobs told them to do, but they're doing that seven years later. Yes, yeah. well, that that again, they're doing early '90s Apple. They're doing mid '90s Apple, or yeah, whatever. But ba yeah, basically, when when they fired Steve Jobs the first time, the first time, um, right. that they're right back to that, right. When Steve Jobs came back to the company in 1997, uh, Apple was near bankruptcy. Yeah, yeah. And and basically Steve Jobs came into the company and why he has the reputation that he does is he goes, "You make 400 products. Why?" And they said, "Well, well, we need to have 400 products on the shelves." And he goes, and he slaps everyone in the line and he yeah. goes, "You're going to make 8 and you're going to make them damn good." Yeah. Well, and right. then when you make 8 products damn good, you can make a ninth. Yeah. And then when you make the ninth damn good, you can make a tenth. And and so literally he discontinued every single thing they had on yeah. the shelf and he said, We're gonna make one computer. And you better make it right. Yeah. And and that saved Apple. That that and the invention of, of iTunes and the digital music store, yeah. that and followed yeah, by the iPad, I, iPhone, I, iPhone. Essentially, yeah. Apple came up with two good products. Was the what was the the, 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 the iMac the iMac and then the uh, I, iPad or no the, the iTunes. Right. Or the, the iPod. The iPod. Right. Those two saved the company. Yeah. Like, if it wasn't for the uh, the iMac and the iPod, bankrupt. The whole right. company was gone. Right. And he said, look, we need a good computer. And that was the first thing. We need a good mm -hmm. user-friendly computer. It needs to be stylish. needs to work 100% every time. Yep. And then, hey, let's get the teens. Let's get the young folks involved mm -hmm. and wanting our brand. Right. And that was great. Yeah. But now it's they're falling way behind, I think. They are. That they've tried to continue on the same path that made them one of the best companies in 2011, in my opinion. Yeah. They made literally the best hardware on the market in 2011. But that's really where they peaked for me. In 2012, it felt like they didn't expand enough. They didn't take advantage of the better processes and hardware that was out at the time. 
And then everything since then has been a revision of that. And they've always been a little behind the curve as far as hardware goes. They've always been behind the curve as far as trends go. They're not coming out with anything new and innovative yeah. and No, no, we're talking, and about, we're talking about Apple, not Intel. Right. Right. <laughs> so is this the MacBook Pro plus, 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 plus? <laughs> X. With touch bar? X. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, so, yeah, it's... <sighs> Apple needs to have another great rethinking of of what they are. Now, they, they make more money than anyone on the planet, so it's kind of hard to fault them, but at the same time, I was a pretty loyal Apple user up until about 2017 when they started screwing me over as a customer. Yeah. Um, I, I used Mac, Mac Pros and MacBook Pros almost exclusively, you know, outside of gaming. You know, I, I still had a nice gaming PC, but in 2016, I, I bought a, an, an iMac, 27 with a Radeon 6990 graphics card, or 2015 or whatever that was. Yeah. Um, I, I had a Mac, I've, I've owned four different Mac Pros personally that I've bought from retail. You know, I, I'm not outside of the Mac Pro Sumer kind of type of buyer. And changes that Mac made in the 2016, 2017, 2018 years turned me off completely. Their customer service is non-existent anymore. Yeah. Uh, their their anti-repair policies are... We've talked about that a number of times. Horrible. Well, and then now with, with Windows, Mike, with rumors, very hint, they're light rumors. Mm -hmm. uh, going to the ARMS uh, processor and Mike going to the Android and Linux. Mm -hmm. That's... So That's another thing. Microsoft announced an Android-based folding tablet phone thing. Yeah, we didn't talk about that. We we actually had to cut a, a few articles right. from this. That wasn't one of them, but there was a yeah, the, lot of... Yeah, the, the Surface Duo. Uh, Steve and I actually talked about it last week. Yeah. Uh, but the Microsoft Surface Duo is a dual-screen Android tablet. Yeah. And, and they said, well, it's running NT, right? No, it's running Android, like Android 9.0. You can download it today. Yeah. And, and and it's running on our new thing. It's like they're not, even, they're not even selling my and and that's that's my point is they're no longer a software company. They're a service yeah. company. Now. No, that I think they're adapting with the times. Yes, they are doing a great job adapting with the times. And they and they, yeah. So yeah, they're just I'm just repeating things that we've right. all said before. But so. but I don't think. Microsoft is going to hold these open source technologies hostage. I think they're embracing these open source technologies. I really do. Yeah. This is not the old embrace, engineer, and, and entrap, or whatever the hell their philosophy was in the early 2000s. Um, this is not the, the employ and conquer kind of stuff they used to run because they did used to start employing various technologies and then modify them to proprietary standards and then say to work on our platform you have to use these proprietary yeah. standards and, I, and then snuff out the competition yeah, people are still afraid of that because that's a past but yes. but for the last two years microsoft has shown no tendency to do that yeah no they've simply embraced those technologies into their own and released their own technologies for the open source community yeah that is so outside the norm for them, and that really gives me hope for where they're going. And every, everyone was super excited about that, too. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. it is 1020. I think that is a show. This has been episode 101 here on Talking Heads. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. And subscribe to Hops and Brews down in the video description if you like our beer and cocktail talk here on the show. Yep. Uh, John does an excellent job over on his show, and I guest star over there from time to time. Uh, make sure to uh, click the Amazon links down in the video description if you have any hardware you'd like to buy. That really does help out the channel. And if you'd like to chat with myself, John, Steve, Rhett, uh, and the ever-growing community over on my private Discord server, make sure to join the Patreon. Links are down in the video description below. Minimum donation of $1 a month, although we do appreciate more. Every dollar goes directly back into content like this. And... Uh, Carbonated beer or carbonated whiskey, whiskey apparently. <laughs> I was gonna say content like this for better or for worse sometimes. <laughs> exactly. Uh, someone did ask about upcoming builds. We did build John an X99 Chinese based system, so stay tuned on the channel Same for that. And you got like two other builds. I have two other builds coming. I have a $3,600, uh, $1,000 budget system coming up, which should be very interesting. And I have, uh, do you want to spoil it? Boy, it's it's gonna be a good one. Let me just say it's going to be a good build. So if you're wanting to really find a little bit more, 
The Discord would be the place to find out. Uh, I just shared on Twitter that I spent more on the case, power supply, and cables than I did on the motherboard, CPU, and GPU. That's stupid. <laughs> That's just stupid. Stay tuned. <laughs> it's going to be a good one. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this one. And as always, we will see you next week. Cheers, all. Bye.